Okay. Call to order the Planning Commission meeting for Pleasant Grove City, November 12th, 2015. Um, present are Commissioners Hardin, Coombs, Richards, Armstrong, that's me, Commissioners Adams, Steele, Baptista, and Niger. We're going to get started um, with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Cardin and opening remarks from Commissioner Adams. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father in heaven, we're grateful for this e evening. We're grateful for the uh, the setting here and the opportunity we have to discuss uh, issues pertaining to this great city. We pray for the city of Pleasant Grove and those that have leadership roles that they might uh, do well for the city. We're grateful to live in this uh, in this wonderful area. We pray that this meeting might go well. That we can be uh, civil and cordial and uh, resolve. Uh, the issues that are on the agenda. Great for this season, Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I already mentioned this, but uh, with our agenda for today, um, item number four, which is uh, a preliminary subdivision at approximately 600 South Apple Grove Lane, that's the Zaipeng Cal. Um, Zyping the state's matter is going to be continued indefinitely, so we're not going to be hearing that one this evening. Um, aside from that, commissioners, you've all had a chance to kind of look over the agenda. Do we have a motion on the agenda approval? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve tonight's agenda. And a second? Second. We've got a motion from Commissioner Coons and a second from Commissioner Adams on the agenda approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, have you had a chance to look over the staff reports, Commissioners? Do you want to make a motion there? I make a motion that we approve the staff reports. We've got a motion from Commissioner Baptista. Do you have a second? Second. A second from Commissioner Steele. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, finally, before we get started, um, do we have, I understand we do have one, a uh, declaration of conflict or abstention from any commissioner mem commission members this evening? Chair, I would like to recuse myself for item number six due to a personal relationship with Mr. Okay, um, so Commissioner Coons will recuse herself from item number six. So when that item comes up, we'll just have you sit in the audience. Okay, <coughs> so we'll move forward with item number one, which is a preliminary um, subdivision hearing, a public hearing for a preliminary subdivision at 273 West, 2300 North in the Northfield neighborhood. Um, okay. So this is a three lot subdivision that's uh, been proposed uh, at 273 West 2300 North. Uh, it's originally going to be, or was originally going to be a two lot subdivision and uh, because it was part of a, a parent property that was illegally subdivided, meaning that they didn't go through the city process and just recorded it in the county. <clears throat> because of that, um, we ended up having to add a third lot to it. So basically what this does is it rectifies the illegal subdivision, makes the lots buildable, um, because from a city standpoint, if it has been illegally subdivided, we can't um, take it through the process uh, to get a building permit. So, um, so 273 West, which is shown there in the kind of light green, and then the, the property to the south of that in the dark green. Uh, we have two different zonings in this subdivision. So uh, the top property being an R120, which is a 20,000 square foot lot, and then the bottom being an RR, which is 21,780 and a half acre. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, so, I guess maybe there we go. So, um, there is an existing home on lot uh, two there, or lot, yeah, lot one. Um, it's to remain. The other 
properties. We're still figuring out about the existing structures there on the, uh, lot three. Uh, that one was just added this last week. So for those of you who may be here for this uh, item, we sent out two mailers. Um, sent out one mailer that said it was going to be a two-lot subdivision, and discovered that same day that it was actually going to be a three-lot subdivision. So we sent out another mailer. So apologize if there's any confusion there. Um, so all the lots meet the minimum lot size. They'll exceed the uh, either 20,000 square foot or 21,780 square foot requirement. Um, the building to remain there on lot one uh, does meet the setbacks requirement. requirement. This is lot one, Royce. Right. Yeah. So kind of way so I continue. I'm like pointing with my fingers. <laughs> so um, as I said, we're not sure what the issue is with these existing structures. Um, this one right here will probably have to be removed because it is in the front yard setback. Um, and then these other two, it depends on how old they are really. If they're predating the subdivision, then they should be okay. Um, if they're not, then we're, we're going to have to have those removed as well because there's no primary uh, building on that property. So I have talked to the property owner here on lot three and uh, I'm going to work with the city on those issues. So. Um, but generally meets the requirements of the, the code and, and the staff that has approval based on that. Okay, Commissioner, do you have any questions for Royce on this one? No. Okay, thank you, Royce. Um, we'll open it up to um, for public remarks or comments. Is there anyone? Oh, actually, <laughs> we'll open it up for the applicant. Is the applicant present? Yeah. You want to come and stand at the podium, and uh, we need your name and your address, your current address, and then just. Tell us whatever you need to tell us if there's anything. Give you a little bit of time. Uh, my name is Enrique Soel. I live in 424 East, 760 North Linden, Utah. We bought this property 10, 11 years ago. And we just find out from the city that was illegally sued by it mm -hmm. from the previous owner. Okay. So it's been a few thousand dollars to hire a surveyor, an engineer, so I can subdivide my property, which is the front, the two lots, one and two. Okay. Number two is belong to Prescott. And I just want to subdivide mine so I can build a house or do something else in that property. Okay. And then uh, they require me to do put the sewer on that old house, which is what we're doing right now. You've owned this one for 11 years, huh? Yeah. Um, but we've been, it's kind of weird because we've been paying our property tax, and the weird find now is being from the city, it's being able to buy. Because the county to, has a different record than the city. Yeah, we went, we follow up with the title company, the one to be the People work back then, and they say they are, they're not in business anymore. Oops. <laughs> okay. So I kind of got a start and spent a few thousand dollars to make this thing work, which is where we're going to go to the city. We're going to the city. Okay. But we just got to find out what that problem is. Okay. So I'm going to fix it. Okay. Thank you. Um, we may ask you to. Come back up. Um, well, commissioners, do you have any other questions for the applicant? Okay. We may ask you to step back up if we have anything else that comes up, but yeah, that will do. Thank you. Now we'll open it up to for any public remarks. Is there anyone here from the public to address us on this one? Okay. Stand up here, give us your name and your and your current address. <coughs> Dick Prescott, twenty one thirty one. North 180 West. That other big chunk of property just south of there is, gotcha. is the one of Okay. Well, uh, yeah. That's what the title company said. That's what the county said. Okay. So, anyway, my deal with this is it's like Enrique's. Like, hey, you get a piece of ground or something and it's like, and all of a sudden you find out there's a cog in there, a ranch in the cog, and it's like, hey, so what do we, you know, actually, what do we do? And then, you know, he wants to develop that, which I can 
clearly you understand that, but to put mine in the same subdivision, yeah. down at the bottom, clear at the bottom on the and then from that map on the on this side is where my house is and stuff. And, and I've been through this stuff before. It's like that place was built, I think, 41 years ago, and it was county. Mm -hmm. And then some of the stuff was the system. But well, you this shouldn't have ever been built here. Hmm. I still got the same original plan, and it was county. So what I'm saying, people, is like I don't have, but I don't want to. I mean, that's my that's my totally retirement, mm -hmm. and I'll probably maybe never subdivide it. But I want to be able to when I when I decide to do it. It's like I don't want to. Okay, well this is here. You could have done this because this was this, and this was that way. So that's that's my concern with it. And one thing is, geez, you look at that you look at that land between me and then and Lique, that should be square enough to make I mean there's only a few pieces of ground left in this city that think overdone by houses or every square piece of dirt that they can get their hands on to, to try to build something on. Well, this piece is, you know, I wish the city council would come out there and see how many fans load of little kids and little people walked up and down that street sidewalk to look at them worthless donkeys and a couple of jokes I got out there, but it means the world to them. So I'm trying to save that part of, at least one part of in the you know, basically the old, the old way how life used to be yeah. around here. And mm -hmm. So, and I'm not against, you know, something like but if I get a totally written deal that down the road somebody else gets an office, oh, well, they shouldn't have done this. They shouldn't have done that. And it's like, yeah, well, this... They shouldn't have done. They shouldn't have done this stuff. I don't know how it got past the city. I mean, I'm just out there on my little tiny little piece of ground, and we went through total heck to get a wedding license to hold yeah. stuff. And a lot of you people is probably here to know what we went through that. So I'm just, and then when this comes up, so, holy smoke! You know, I think I think what we're doing here and what you guys are doing here right now is correcting a problem that was there before, and I think you're going to be left with a situation that's a lot better than what we have now. So. Well, I, I, you know, I'm not got the word or whatever. <coughs> you know, it's like I'm basically stuck in between it. So <coughs> this is the process to fix something that it sounds like wasn't created by you or the previous or, or the the. Well, it, you know, it, it wasn't, and my, well, I don't know exactly what happened out there, but some other company, some land people come in and bought that up, and then they, land brokers, and then they held it to Ivory Homes, or sold it to Ivory Homes, or they sold it to somebody else. I can't remember. I can't follow all, the, all of that stuff, but this... Ellie Riser and stuff, when when they would had enough of this this community and whatever, they said, I, I told them before, I said, if you ever sell out, I said, I want to buy some of this ground. So this is what, when I came in and drove, drove the lines and stuff, that's where, <coughs> well, okay, and then Geez, I was in Wyoming something and they grew this up and I was going to change that line because at one time I was going to buy that other piece of ground. Okay. But they couldn't sell it or something, I don't know. They had some nephew of theirs from California that was supposed to be some, but you know what happened up in California. Yeah. So, are, are you good with it? If, if we do this and it corrects it, 
are, are you, you're, sounds like you're okay with it if you just want it fixed? Well, I want to square that round. Okay, now that's a different process. Um, and I think you could do that, but um, you know, that's going to be you coming in. And this isn't going to stop you from doing that. Well, right. So, uh, I mean, you've got 2.4 acres. I'm sure you could do lots with it. Um, look at well, you're it's right not, up it's at flooding as not far as just zone that. change goes. It's not like I'm trying to be a land grab or whatever. But in reality, mm -hmm. I've, I've developed a little bit of ground and everything before from the old days. I just like it. Jeez. To have, yep. to have that lot come clear down there and be would be nothing but a wheat pile and miss it. Yeah. And I see that. I, I, I mean, what we're here for today sure, not, is, I understand. is just to look at what the right. engineering, you know, what, what he's had as far as engineering and surveying is, has been done. And it looks to me well, like... Well, I haven't done anything to that. Yeah, right. And so what we have to do here is just right. look at and what I, he's and done. I, and and I say, totally understand. So as long as you're, you know, I mean, if you want to, if you want to do anything else, then that's going to be a different trip. But... Uh, as long as you're good with this one, then we'll move forward with it. Well, what else can I say? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. I know there's a, uh, I'm from the old west, I've seen a few hanging trees, so I <laughs> So, I probably need to talk to them too. About the square enough to be on the back. Yeah, that right. would be a, another trip. And, right. And you'd probably come in and meet with uh, Royce or with Ken about that and see if you can make it work the way you want it to work um, <coughs> between you and your neighbor. But this will solve his his problem of, of buying something he thought was what it was from somebody that should have done it a little bit differently. So we're just trying to fix it. I think we're all trying to fix it. He's in the same boat as me. My boat's just a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else want to speak to this one? No. Nope. Okay. We'll close the public comment. And bring it back up here. Commissioners, how do you feel about this? Seeing any concerns or? Okay. Anybody want to make a motion? Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. I move the Planning Commission approve the request of Enrique and Alida. Escobedo for a three lot preliminary subdivision plat called Malia's Estate Plat A on property at approximately 273 West, 2300 North in the R120 single family residential zone and RR rural residential zone and adopting the exhibits, conditions, and findings of this staff report and is modified by the conditions below. All final planning, engineering, and fire department requirements are met. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion from. Commissioner Coons and a second from Commissioner Richards. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, you know, passes. We'll move on to agenda item number two, which is a public hearing for a very similar item. Oh, oh yeah. I've got one more question. Sure. Can we keep going with improvements now because we have we hire a room? Probably not. I'd, this Pretty is close. the preliminary plat approval. You need to get final plat approval at City Council. So like, Pretty close. Almost yeah, there. Yeah, we're, we're close. But there will need to be one additional meeting for final approval. Um, if you'll uh, contact me or, or Royce, we can let you know what date that will be uh, ready to go forward to the, plan, or to the City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so... Now we're on uh, item number two, which is a rezone at 1419 North and 100 East in the Northfield subdivision. Uh, this is a public hearing to consider a request by Brent Bullock for a rezone of approximately 0.324 acres from RR um, Rural Residential to R112, which is a single family residential with 12,000 square foot lots. Um, property located at approximately 1419 North. 100 East in the RR Rural Residential Zone. Next slide. So basically this uh, request is, is uh, rezone of Lot 2, as a proposed subdivision that we're talking about in a minute. <coughs> so Lot 2, as it has been most recently submitted, includes all this <coughs> striped area uh, to be zoned to R1 So It's currently RR on the area up there. And, uh, so since the property to the north, the property to the south, and the 
west a little bit is RR. Um, that's kind of the first planning issue that, that we have is that we created an island of R1 call on just one property. So um, we either want to commit to the R112 or we want to rezone more than just the one property to R112. Um, so it was unclear to me as to why this needed to be rezoned. Uh, it's exceeding the minimum lot size for a half an acre, uh, which is the RR. Um, that it's currently in. So there's, there's not a, a need from the lot size standpoint to rezone it. Um, and so the second major thing is that uh, when I noticed it two weeks ago, uh, my understanding was that we were going to be rezoning 0.324 acres. That was what had been submitted in the plat. And uh, we got some review comments back through engineering. And uh, one of the issues was that the stem access needed to be included in that lot. And so that increased the size of the lot. So if we were to approve the 0.324 uh, acre change, we'd create a, an island of R112 as well as um, as uh, not rezoning the entire parcel, just be part of it. And we're not sure necessarily what part that would be. I guess we could follow the old description, um, but it just seems kind of strange to rezone part of the parcel when you have the opportunity to rezone the whole thing if that's what the applicant still desires to do. So, um, so based on that, we recommend that this be continued, uh, that the applicant has a chance to look at things, uh, we'll continue indefinitely, so the applicant has a chance to look at things and find out what the exact measurements are and uh, determine that this is, that there's basically good reasoning for rezoning this. Um, so one of the requirements in our code is that uh, the applicants basically show that this is a, this, this is a good idea, the rezone is going to be beneficial to the city and it's going to be able to further the general plan. So, like I said, it, it, from the standpoint that it does create an island of R112 and, and the property meets the minimum lot size for an RR, I don't really see the purpose of rezoning. So, okay. Are there any questions on this? Questions for Royce? Thanks, Royce. Thank you. The applicant, if you could step forward and address us on this one. I'd be happy to. Uh, when I came down to the city, right. And 1419 North Monterey. There you go. Gotcha. When I first came down to the city, I spoke to Royce about the zoning, and we talked about R112, and there was some discussion about whether or not I could include the stem. And he said he thought that that was, would not be included in the stem. So we did the zone, paid the money to have the zone change. I'd withdraw that if, in fact, it is over the half acre, so there's no need to continue that. Okay. Because when we then got looking at it, and they wanted a, a legal description, the surveyor included the stem in it, which moved it up above the requirement. So I left messages trying to find out for purposes of this meeting if they needed to withdraw that. I think we can help you with that. Withdraw my request. Okay. Maybe I can get my money back too. <laughs> it sounds to me like there was a misunderstanding there, so we can we can reimburse you. Okay. So I'd withdraw the zone request. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> we'll, we'll just go ahead and uh, and and deny it. Withdraw. Probably just withdraw it completely. Just, yeah. Just withdraw it from the agenda at the applicant's request. Okay. Let's pull this one from the agenda at the applicant's request. Make a motion. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Does anybody want to make a motion? Sure. I move that we withdraw item number two from the agenda based on the applicant's um, request. I'll second. A motion from Commissioner Adams and a second from Commissioner Baptista. So talk. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll move on to the next one which is um, item number three, a, a preliminary subdivision at 1419 North and 100 East in the Northfield um, neighborhood. Public hearing to consider a request by Brent Bullock for two, a two lot minor subdivision called Bullock Estates, consisting of approximately 1.2 acre, acres on property located at approximately 1419 North, 100 East in the RR Rural Residential Zone. Okay. Um, so this one had a lot more 
indication on it. So I was just confused on that last one. So we go to the next slide. Um, so again, this is that same property. So this is up by the Manila Park. Um, so an aerial property shows that we have this existing uh, stem, and then the applicant's property here that's going to be cut off roughly there behind the existing accessory structure to create a second lot back here. So um, as has been discussed, this is owned RR um, lots in the proposed subdivision and minimum lot size. Um, so we can see here uh, the zoning again. If it was rezoned, it would have kind of created like an island situation. So All right. So uh, I some formatting issues. I noticed that there's another plot on the front page, and I don't know what happened. But this word had some some issues there. So anyway. Uh, if you can kind of scoot that over and line it up in your mind. Uh, basically, lot two, lot 2 back here is going to include this stem. So basically the stem ends roughly here right now, the existing stem. So we'd be extending it out this way and creating a little hammerhead for emergency services turnaround. Um, so again, it's pretty straightforward. They all need to on lot size. There's a minimum local area on these properties. Uh, we're putting the setbacks on the property. Existing buildings to remain also meet the required setbacks uh, for the RR zone. So, um, based on the fact that it does meet the code, it's not working as approval of the plan. Okay. Any questions? Any questions for <coughs> the speakers? Okay. Thank you. Would the applicant like to step forward and address us? The same person in the server here. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just. This is a lot that I'm creating for my son. I'm concerned about having him work that for me. Understand that? Yeah. He has four children. But he's got an awesome wife. <laughs> um, I met and I uh, appreciate our city engineer and the system. I would just request that you get a good one. I appreciate it. See if we can start taking it away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll open this up to the um, public. Is anybody from the public here to address us on this matter? Go ahead and we'll close that back down and um, bring it back up here. Commissioners, do you have any? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. Okay. I move the Planning Commission approve the request of Rent Board for two lot preliminary subdivision uh, plaque called Bullock Estates Plat A on property at uh, approximately 1419 North 100 East in the, I'm say, rural residential uh, zone, uh, which is different from what's in the staff reports on page three, uh, because we had R112 you know, from previous to that. Uh, so, we just need to eliminate one of those RR res rural residential elements in there. And adopt an exhibits, conditions, and timings of the staff report. Second. Um, so we've got a, let's see, we've got a motion from Commissioner Richards and a second from Commissioner Coombs. All <coughs> Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. This we'll item will go forward as a final plat to, planning, uh, to the City Council on the 1st of December. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number five, which is a public hearing for a site plan um, at 1679 West State Street in the Sam White Lane subdivision. Public hearing to consider a request by Edward Allen for a site plan approval for a 12,000 square foot convenience store with an eight pump fuel station operated 24 hours per day, seven days per week, selling beer, tobacco on the pro also selling beer and tobacco on the property located in approximately. 1679 West State Street in the Grove Commercial Sales Subdivision. <coughs> Royce? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is down off of uh, State Street as you're headed out of town. Out of town I guess. Um, so in front of the new Walmart neighborhood market. And, uh, so here's the site currently. So you can see there's a street here going into Walmart. So Walmart parking lot. And then um, there's an existing sign for Walmart here. And then the rest of the parcels uh, empty. So 
Um, this is zoned the Grove Commercial Sales, which permits this type of use. So it's going to be a gas station and convenience store, as I mentioned. Um, so here's a rendering of what was submitted to us after our discussion with the Design Review Board. So that to point out just kind of the major changes. Um, first of all, um, this is going to be a brown here, where originally it was more of a, it was a bright red. So the mountain design district that this is located in the Grove Zone requires red cones. So um, we figure that this, this little bit of red is still okay. We want people to, to know that it's there and not camouflage into the, the background. But um, the applicants have been very willing to work with us on, on making sure that we meet those aesthetic requirements. So also, um, timbers have been included here. These are originally just brick columns. So this is going to be timber with uh, uh, stone on the bottom of these columns. Stone has also been added to the bottom of the building uh, with a brick in the middle and then the metal sheeting here. So metal sheeting is one of the things that's just required by the code and is also part of the original design for the building, so it works out. Um, the design review board also requested that this, uh, I believe it's a man server, that's what they call it, is maintained here on top. <coughs> Um, so, venture group is going to match roughly the coloration of the, uh, the cedar on the bottom. There's going to be a stain on that, that cedar wood to, to match. Um, let's see, let's go to the next one. So, there's a lot of information here. I'll just kind of point out the major things. So, we have uh, a landscape buffer here that goes around the building, or around the site, and uh, another one here. So the parking will be here, and because of the size of the building, that's all the parking they need. We have a pedestrian access to the building and then a pedestrian access out here to this sidewalk, which then connects to the main pedestrian uh, right away. So over here on this side, you'll notice that the, um, landscape, island, or the landscape buffer is not 25 feet the entire way. <coughs> um, so the issue with that is that uh, there's a truck turnaround radius requirement here for uh, be able to fill up the oil here, or the gas. Trucks have to be able to come in and then pull it around. And having the landscape buffer here put it too close to the building, <coughs> making it not possible to get the trucks in. And uh, aside from uh, shrinking the building down or moving the building around, um, we don't really see that as a, a super beneficial thing versus averaging this landscaping uh, buffer out. So the code requires that they can have up to a five foot um, difference there. And so it meets that. But then he also, the applicants also included this area here to increase the landscape upper area so that we have a, an average total area of 25 square or 25 feet. So if we can go to the next slide. So this is the landscape plan. So as you can see, we have some trees up front here um, and around kind of screen the sites generally create more of a, an attractive appeal. Um, there's berms that we placed out here, uh, three feet high. And we have some more trees here where uh, the parking and, and the back of the building border the Walmart parking lot. So um, with the two entrances here, uh, we left this one pretty wide again to be able to get trucks in there. And this one has some trees around it as required by code. So um, this has also included some bike parking as required by the code and uh, meets, well, meets all the requirements for landscaping in the zone. So we have more extensive landscaping requirements here than in other areas. Um, so overall, this uh, proposed development doesn't meet the intent of the ordinance down there in the growth zone. And it's pretty straightforward being such a small building. Um, but we feel like you know, if there are any aesthetic changes that Planning Commission would like to see that are different than what the Design Review Board suggested as, as was included in the staff report and we'll feel free to make those recommendations. So the intent of, of the approval process down there is just to allow the City Council to make, uh, to get the best kind of development that they can. Okay, so are there any questions? Questions for Royce? Any questioners? Thank you, Royce. Is the applicant present? Grant Dennis with Greenberg Farrell. My address is 1430 West Peachtree Street, Northwest, and that's on the way to Georgia. Um, we're asking for site plan approval, and I'm here to answer any questions you guys may have. Okay. Do we have any questions? Okay. <laughs>
some questions for the afternoon? No, I don't think we have any. Huh? Right. Uh, we might, yeah, depending on what the public says, we might have it back up, but then we'll, be good. Um, we'll close that and open it back up to, I'll open it to the public. Is there anyone from the public that's here to make any comments on this item? We'll close our public comment portion and then bring it back up here, commissioners. Um, how do you guys feel about this? Maybe three. The gas station. I think you said there was a berm in the front that, that's on State Street, is that right? Yeah, it's going to wrap around the entire. You can see contour lines there. It'll wrap okay, around gotcha. the side on the corner. It's a three foot high berm. Is there any requirement as far as the size of trees? Yeah, so they need to be at least a, a two inch caliper standard, and then when they're around the entrances, they need to be three inch caliper. The berm seems to be seven feet high. Any other questions? Has somebody prepared to make a motion on this one? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. Mr. Smith. I move the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council approve the request of Edward Allen for a 0.97 acre development called Murphy Express in the Grove Road Commercial Sales Subdistrict, adopting the exhibits, conditions, and findings of the staff report as modified by the conditions below. And we've got a motion from Commissioner okay. Steele, a second from Commissioner Bautista. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you. This item is scheduled to be uh, in front of the City Council <coughs> next Tuesday for final approval. All right. So we'll move on to item number six. And, yeah. Okay. Mr. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so this will put Commissioner Neidiger in, in as a replacement for Commissioner mm -hmm. Coons, our alternate. Um, this is a public hearing for a rezone at 90 North, 600 West, in the Little Dead Mark subdivision. It's a public hearing to consider a request by J.D. Brisk <coughs> for a rezone of approximately 0.95 acres, creating an overlay called the Automobile Sales and applying it to the to property located at approximately 90 North and 600 West in the downtown village zone, downtown commercial subdistrict. Right. Okay. So uh, this is down about where State Street and Pleasant Grove Boulevard cross. Um, so we kind of consider that the entrance to the downtown area, that really is the primary entrance uh, from the west. So Pleasant Grove Boulevard being the, the largest road there. Um, so Here's the property here. So this is 600 West and Center Street. So for those of you that are familiar with it, you know, the train tracks going right here, and then you kind of make the bend, and right about there is where it uh, meets uh, State Street. So anyway, so this is pretty pretty close to uh, again kind of a gateway to the downtown area. Uh, so 0.95 acres is what's been requested for a rezone. And again, we're not rezoning the base; we're putting an overlay on top of this. Um, and kind of well creating an overlay to put on top of it. So, we go to the next slide. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, so, to explain the situation, basically the overlay is really simple. Um, it will allow for <coughs> automobile sales. So, um, as, as included in the staff report, the overlay would allow for uh, just the one use number. And, um, use number. it would just be 5511. Um, we have some just standards for the size of the property. Uh, so, for example, the property needs to be at least a half an acre, which this is. Um, we feel like for an automobile sales property, a half an acre is a pretty reasonable size. Um, so, and then also it can, it can only be applied in the downtown village zone. So, the downtown village zone is uh, more of a retail based uh, zone for at least the subdistrict, the commercial subdistrict. So um, the original application for this was brought forward uh, two months ago. Um, came, came forward and the applicants wanted to just add that to the list of, of permitted uses. Um, this was suggested by staff. And uh, the city council was not willing to add automobile sales to the downtown, over, uh, downtown um, commercial subdistrict. So we 
because of that, um, we've been looking at this overlay situation. And uh, staff feels still the same as we did before. Um, we don't feel like this is a good use for the property because of, of the underlying zone. So because it's a downtown village zone, you know, it's intended for more retail sales and it's more intended uh, for the types of uses that are going to allow for more of an aesthetic benefit, whereas um, uh, commercial or automobile sales are not quite as aesthetically pleasing necessarily. So we do allow those across the street to the south in the, in the commercial sales zone, or the general commercial. So we also allow the commercial sales uh, zone as well, which is further south on State Street. So there are areas in the city where this is possible. Um, we just don't feel like the downtown village zone is the best place for this. So um, creating an overlay that would allow for automobile sales in the downtown village zone doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a planning standpoint because what we're doing is creating an entire overlay to allow for one single use. Um, so because it is just one use, you know, there's also the possibility that it would be applied to other parcels within the downtown village zone. And the council has very clearly said just recently that they don't want automobile sales in the downtown village zone. So really, effectively, what we would be doing is We'd be creating the overlay and uh, putting it on this parcel, so we're creating the overlay just for this parcel, basically, which we can do, but from a planning standpoint, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, um, and of course, the applicant can speak to the situation that he's, he's looking to, to do. My understanding is that he wants to improve the property, which we'd love to see. Um, I just, from a planning standpoint, feel that there are uh, significant enough risks if, if something does go wrong with the applicant's plan. Then we have this property where automobile sales are allowed and the gateway area to downtown, and uh, that's not the intent of the underlying zone. So, from a general plan standpoint, we don't feel like that's a good idea. So, um, and so we recommend denial of creating the overlay and applying it to the property just based on those reasons. So, are there any questions? Any questions for Royce? Any questions? Yeah. Do you know what the city council was thinking about when they suggested that their option is to do it? Were they thinking that there was a way to allow sales just on this one apartment? Or? You know, I wasn't at the meeting. I think I can speak to that. Uh, yeah, uh, from my understanding of the discussion that happened with city council is that uh, they felt that uh, the, the approach of adding the use to the zone was, was not the good approach and that perhaps there was a better way that the applicant could come forward and uh, overlay was uh, the one option that was suggested that uh, the applicant could work with staff and, and come forward with that. Um, part of the discussion was um, leaning towards the improvement of the property and what we have learned in uh, working with the applicant since the city council meeting is that uh, the applicant is not willing or able at this time to make any improvements to the property uh, until such time he is able to purchase it from the current owner. Uh, he would like to be able to add used auto car sales to the existing property and pretty much leave it the way it is, maybe cleaning it up a little bit. You may possibly remove the fencing, uh, do a couple other minor uh, improvements to the, the land, but that until he was able to actually purchase the property, uh, he would not be making any major improvements uh, to meet a site plan approval uh, with all the landscaping and everything that is otherwise required. <laughs> so I think we're, we're not meeting that objective initially, and there's really no guarantee that at any point in the future that will actually occur. And so I think we need to kind of remove the idea of the, pro the property being improved as a reason for approving this and just look at it overall. Does it meet the criteria for the downtown village zone? And is it something that we ultimately want to see forever and always on that corner? Any questions? At the, at the point where, um, where, I mean, if you ended up owning this, would we have a huge problem with adjusting the zone? I mean, it isn't right across the street uh, an approved sales or uh, automobile sales or approved use? It's an existing um, non-conforming use. Okay. So I think the vision for both of those corners is that they would be a higher-end uh, commercial uh, area gateway into downtown. Okay. 
And so even though there are existing uses there that don't meet that, there is another vision for how those properties can develop. Okay. Sounds good. Any other questions for Scott? Thank you, Royce. Is the applicant here? Yes, my name is Steve Paul, and uh, I'm representing J.D. Brisk uh, here for this. And I'm, I am the renter for the leaser that's there now, and I own Four Seasons Auto Repair, which is located there. And I've been there for four years. What's your current address? My home address is 652 North, 550 East in American Port. Okay. Um, <clears throat> originally, when we uh, wanted to do this, we came to the Planning Commission and presented, uh, presented what we wanted to do. And the main objective, there was basically, if I recall, two main objectives. One was the, uh, the flow from the uh, Macy's area sidewalk flow going into the downtown area. And the second one, which was the main objective, was that the city commission had uh, specifically zoned the downtown gateway um, to be businesses on a scale of one to ten, ten type businesses in that area. And so that is why we were voted down. Um, the question was raised, do we, are we against this because of the zone or is there other reasons and was said because of the way the city commission had zoned it. So when I uh, met with the uh, city commission, I presented my case there, and unfortunately, it was presented as changing the entire zone, which is not what we had in mind at all. Um, and uh, so what I explained to this, the, the city commission is, this piece of property is in a very unique situation than the rest of the zone. Um, are you able to get that up, Tanner? If not, I'll try and... Is this the PowerPoint you're looking for? Oh. <laughs> yes, that's it. So, uh, I'm sure you're familiar. I've been there for four years. Uh, this is what it's looked like. Sometimes worse sometimes better, uh, but this is what it's looked like for the last four years, uh, and before then it was probably somewhat worse than what that is right there. Um, can you go to the next slide, Jim? <clears throat> it's not coming up. Well, well you can leave it there. Um, the unique portion is that, um, as you can see on the right, that's Center Street, and there in front of me is 600 West. So I am in the, the southwest corner of, the, of that zone. If you look right here, the freight link line tracks run the entire length of my 180 feet uh, fence line that runs along Pleasant Grove Boulevard. Um, one of the what's unique about it is the freight train runs on there during business week the monday through friday uh, three days a week and it runs several times a day and because of the crossings of on uh, the railroad across center street which is the largest crossing in pleasant grove and across 600 west the freight train actually blows his horn 
long enough to clear both intersections the entire way through my property there. When that takes place, the train horn is so loud that if you're on the phone or talking to somebody, everything just has to stop till that train goes by. And my concern was, as long as that freight train is running there, this is never going to be a 10 location. Uh, no business is going to put a million dollar building there and, and have that freight train running through there three days a week, several times a day in the middle of their business conversations. And so uh, my request, uh, and, and according to the, the city council, is to request an overlaying just for that property because it is unique. And that uh, by bringing in uh, Ross and Jim Wilson, who have been uh, reputable used car dealers for 40 years in Utah County, um, they're good, honest guys. You don't stay in business that long for if you're not. And so what we wanted to do is to come in here and try the, try the used cars and see if we can really make an improvement um, in, in the business there. And we have uh, gotten rid of the renters that were in there with me, which cleared a lot of the junk out of there. And uh, went in and we've gotten the weeds all down. And uh, as, a, as a time crunch and good faith, we've repainted the building. We've done a lot, and that's just in the last week. Uh, of cleaning this up and what our intentions are is if we're allowed to operate there and it is successful as a used car lot uh, and repair shop uh, we want to purchase the property from JD and uh, once we do that a lot of this stuff that he's using that he's storing along this fence all of all of his stuff over there would be gone and at that point, we can go in there, do the improvements. We can put the asphalt in, the curb and gutter, the, the sidewalk, uh, um, you know, make it look as good as we can. Uh, and, and like Ken said in the last meeting, it would, it would, car lot would never be a 10. But it's going to take a very unique business to move into that location with that railroad to have a 10 in there. And so what we would like to do is make it a seven or an eight, you know, as best we can and, and, uh, and improve that. Um, I believe that with the new zone change, uh, which JD wasn't even aware of, was quite upset when he found out that the zone had been changed. Um, with the limitations that he has there, I think that he will continue to continue to rent that out and grandfather it in as repair shop after repair shop after repair shop has been done in the past until someone is willing to come in, put the money up, and build a tin next to a freight train. And when I talked to the railroad department, they said that's going to stay freight line for many, many years. They have no other way of, of servicing their customers up and down the tracks. And so my request is that you consider that um, and if you allow us to go in there and do that 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 allows us to uh, get a little bit, bit of a business history I do have investors lined up that are willing to come in put a lot of money into it uh, Ross and Jim have already started putting money into it and this could be much much nicer than what it is now or what it will be for a long time um, if, we, if we're not doing the car sales. So. Richard, do you have any questions for that? Okay. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in three years, is that, that's what you want to develop as a track history, is that what you're saying? Yes, we three wanted years. to. Uh, <clears throat> we wanted to go in there and run it for three years, um, and possibly sooner if it's. If it's quite successful then we intend on buying it and doing the improvements before three years and uh, when Ken and I kind of discussed this in his office um, we were even did I lose you there? Sorry. Uh, we even talked about the possibility of having that in the contract of we give you three years and after that three years you have to start doing the improvements 
or you lose the, the car dealership, <coughs> which I was willing to go along with because it, at that point it's either do it or, you know, get with it or get out at that point. And uh, after talking to the city attorney, um, they said that they can't do that. It's either got to be yes or no. And so uh, uh, I'm asking that you do yes, that we are going to, it's going to look much nicer um, immediately. It already has started to look much nicer. It, or for the last six much, months, it's looked much nicer than what you see right there. Um, and um, in that three-year period, uh, if the investors are happy with it, we're going to purchase this. We're going to uh, develop it. We'll redo the building. We'll use the earth tones. We'll, I've, I've spent some time with Ken, and we understand the vision that the city has for the, the downtown village. And I think it's a great idea, but I think it'd be a much better idea 200 feet down the road where it's not in a industrial area with a railroad track as compared to where it's at. But I would, I would like to make it as nice as I possibly can and keep the flow from the Macy's area all the way to the downtown area. Nice, pretty, and, and um, uniform so that it's you're not coming across the street from Jake's Repair onto a dirt road going up and then where the new uh, development is right behind me for the senior citizens development, you know, they got the nice sidewalks and whatnot. Uh, I would like to do whatever it is they come up to my property with from there up to the street, continue on with the same type of flow. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question, Mr. Chair. Um, you said the train comes by how many times a day? At least twice a day, three days a week, sometimes four. Some They do a lot of uh, testing with the city, so they'll put police cars all the way around that thing. And on those testing days, that train will cross probably 20 times on those testing days. Understand from JD, uh, the developer that's putting that in is already uh, uh, commented on how much nicer our places look since I got rid of the other renters. And they had, quite frankly, it looked like a junkyard because they had wrecked vehicles. They were reconditioning. They had boats that they were renting and and snowmobiles and sedus and all of that. They just was supposed to be just along the fence line, nice, clean, new equipment and. Before I knew it, it looked like a junkyard in there. So I basically had to get them out of there. It just it was killing my business. And I think this is something that would, would with the used car sales, it would not only help my business, but would also um, make it much more beautiful there. Anything else? Any other questions for that? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, let's open this up for. Uh, Public remarks. Is there anybody here from the public that's here to address this item? We'll close that and uh, bring it back up here. Who you guys feel about this? Well, help me, help me wrap my head around this because we were here just a couple months ago. Yeah. What's, what's different this time? This is a, the overlay is there. So the approach is different. Uh, the, put it in the approach way. earlier was that let's just add auto sales as a permitted use in the downtown building zone. In the, in the whole zone, and that's, that whole was zone. the reason we right. denied it is because it would affect right. the entire zone. So the city council asked us to approach this differently, so the best way we can come up with is to just create an overlay. Even though staff still does not support that request, that would be a different way of, of isolating that use. <coughs> Doesn't limit it to that owner. No. So it means that owner. of that property is still yeah. ongoing. We'd have to go through another zone change to change. Okay. Yeah. 
until you move it. Yeah. It goes up the line. Yeah. And can the, the three-year um, suggestion, that's not that's not part of the proposal, correct? That was, that, that that was an idea, but it's not feasible. suggestion of what, what he thinks he can do, but there's uh, nothing that we can tie him to. I don't see how you can regulate that at all. I don't know how you define the level of improvement is different. Well, it, it would have to meet the current requirement for the, you know, the, the architectural review that, just like the gas station did for its area, by the time he went ahead and did the improvement, but we can't sit there and say we have to get it done within three years. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the thing is, uh, by just it's adding in years, now. if he's not going to change the buildings, create new buildings, do other site improvements, um, then there wouldn't be anything to kick in the requirement for a site plan which would have all these improvement requirements. Mm -hmm. He's just asking that he'd be able to take the site as it is and add some cars for sale on it. Another thing I forgot to mention in my presentation is that if we allow an overlay that allows for a specific use like this, we set a precedent for Creating fines on the new space and the way it's put in there. And so, um, you know, it's going to be really hard to allow this when somebody else comes in with something that's maybe more intensive, that's more impactful, and to say, well, if you allowed that, well, what's, you know, what's the difference? And if our, if our basis is, well, it's going to be improved at some point, then. Okay. Are they grandfathered in, in the current zoning? Are they grandfathered in to do car sales? Have a, there's a parking lot here. It's being used for storage of vehicles that are being sold okay. elsewhere. Okay, gotcha. The zone across Center Street allows car sales, correct? Okay. That's what Dell is in because yes. it's in that other zone. Yes, yeah, south of State Street. Okay. Center Street. Okay. Anything else? Well, I'm not talking too much here, but. I'm, try, I'm trying to think here. Okay, this is. I know this isn't what it looks like right now. But what are, what are we what are we worried about here? Is it just the look of it, the look of, of selling cars on the corner there. I know we talked about this being a gateway, but either way, it's gonna look like that, right? For the moment, well, for the time yeah, being. Yeah. But like Ken said, if an, if again, if the property goes up for sale or somebody wants to develop it, then. Sure. See, I think you've got to, with the current use is it is an auto repair place. Mm -hmm. If you allow some flexibility within the zone, then what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a, a profitable piece of property for the owner for an auto repair facility plus a, a auto sales place for a long, long time. That means maybe there's some improvement, but it you know, we might be looking at another 40 years with cars being repaired and sold on that corner. And and we know that, I mean, this is, the, the use is changing. The piece right behind them just had, how many residences are in there? 100? 162 residences went in immediately behind. My guess, and, and it has, has some commercial on the front, too, of that development. I, my guess is that that, I, I'm just guessing, based on use, that that's going to change the way this feels. I mean, you've got office spaces that are right across the street. And I've lived on Center Street. My address is Center Street for my house. And I have seen that train. I've lived there for 13 years, I think now. I've seen the train once. Does, does staff have a position on the train? Does it? Do we know? Yeah, I, I'm not sure how many uh, times it actually goes, but uh, <coughs> my awareness is more in the realm of uh, Drew. That if it does come through a couple times a day, three times a week, it's got to be a long time when people aren't seeing or feeling it. There might be a couple times where there is an impact on traffic or whatever, but um, it's very minimal as far as how often during the day and what kind of impact it has in that area. There are a lot of developments. You know, a lot of places that have uh, built right up near railroad tracks, and 
they can be just as nice as can be. So yeah. I don't see this as having a real strong. Right. Effect. You look up in Draper right now, and you've got tracks that goes right past. It's tracks, but it's a little different. Um, tracks goes right past everything. You've got front runner that goes right past everything in Lehigh. I, I mean, and it's Which a little bit. Ultimately, these tracks are being planned for tracks. Right. That That's the thing, is that I understand tracks owns the right of way all the way to North County Boulevard on this track right here. My guess is that that's going to be a very valuable piece of land in the next 15 years. So, um, it, we've actually closed that down. If you've got a quick comment. A quick comment is, is uh, one of the other things was, is if Pleasant Grove uh, would like to have a track station there, which is one of the things that, that they were thinking that maybe there would be eventually be a, a track station there. And if Trax is purchasing, the, if they decide that's where they want to go, and that's where Pleasant Grove wants them to go, they're going to get it for a lot better deal from me as a repair shop and a car lot as compared to a professional building there. If they're going to pay that kind of money, they're going to go somewhere else. And so that, that's another thing in my favor. And as far as the train goes, I would like to invite you all to come down tomorrow between 10 and 12 and listen to the train. Okay. I got a question for you, uh, Appleton. Uh, okay. Is this uh, the owner of the property, JD? Is that his name? Yes, JD okay. Bresk. Uh huh. Is he here tonight? No, he's not. Okay. Um, so is he looking at? He's looking for to eventually sell this property in the near future, correct? Yes, I have whether a lease, be, a lease be, agreement to buy. Whether it be you or somebody else. Um. Yes, however, he was upset because of what he thought he, he could get out of the property. But the downtown zoning would limit what buildings could, what type of buildings could go in there. There would, there would be a big limit. And with that train blasting through there, even if it is only six times a week or ten times a week, uh, there's not a doctor or a dentist that's going to be wanting to be doing a procedure when that train goes off. Because you can be in the very back inside bathroom on the phone and you can't hear. You cannot communicate. There's not going to be a lawyer that wants to talk to a, uh, have a conference call with a judge and we have that going on. I appreciate that. We, we have to just bring it back here. We're supposed to have the, those, those, those remarks close to So, um, anything else we want to say? Anybody prepared to make a motion at this point? I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I move that the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council approve the request of J.D. Brisk for the creation of City Code Section 10-13C Automotive Sales Overlay and to apply the Automotive Sales Overlay to approximately 0 0.95 acres located at approximately 90 North, 600 West in the Downtown Village Commercial Subdivision. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Baptista. Uh, do we have a second? Motion fails. Anybody else want to make another motion? I'd just like to do a little more discussion. Okay. Um, I, I see, you know, I, that, that particular corner, I, I can see the points that, I'm sorry, what was your last name? Cole. Cole, and Mr. Cole made, you know, regarding, um, you know, the uses of it. Uh, you know, and the, I, I think it, in my opinion, I think it's a limited use. You know, as to what you can put there and be, and be successful, especially at uh, this point. At this point, um, and you know, and I think, you know, and I think if, if you had a, if, if Mr. Cole, if you were buying it today, you know, building the unit, and building the building today, you know, through this, you know, then I could see how it could fit more in, right? Um, and, and but my my, I guess my reluctance. Is, is the fact, you know, I drove by there today, you know, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the senior place is right behind you. They're starting, they're starting to come. They're looking good. Yeah. yeah. My question is, how many of them are going to rent that front with the train? I was like, yeah, I, I, I heard your comment on that. Okay, I understand that. Um, you know, was, and, and I could see, I could see more of a, a more of a gateway there than I than I think I could last time you met. Okay, here, um, you know, and, and that's uh, and, and 
and I do feel that uh, you know, you're not the property owner right now, you know, uh, in that sense. I think if, if you're purchasing the property right now and making the changes you know, according to the, you know, the, the review board, you know, as far as the architectural designs and things like that, I, I think I, I think I would I would feel differently. But you're taking three years and you know, and, and I can understand why you want you know, possibly it could be sooner depending on how successful it is. But I'll say three years for the sake of that's what time frame you plan to give it. Um, and, and that's you know, and if it doesn't work then it could go back to what it was before. And I you know, so um, and then we got, and then, and then we got, to, and then we can have other. We don't want to be used for automobiles, you know. You have an overlay where you can do automobiles there, and, and it, who knows what it looked like at that point in time. That's my concern. That I, I appreciate your remarks as far as that goes, because it's a big concern of mine too. I think I would look at this differently were we to be looking at a new site plan and. Architectural review now and and see if it met those requirements. At the same time, I still don't know that I feel comfortable with the idea of, of basically making a spot zone type of overlay that specifically covered one specific use in one specific area. That's not the that's not the application of zoning. I, I, I'm I'm concerned just like Royce said. That somebody else will come in and say, "Well, yeah, but zoning doesn't really matter to me either because I have this special use for this special place. We have initial use permits for that kind of thing, I, and but I, it still has to be a, a use that we're just concerned about." And here, the city council is saying, "We don't even want to look at this type of use in this zone at all." And I and I feel strongly for property rights and, and such, but. The property owner is not here presenting them. Yeah. You know, he's not presenting them the plan. You know, you as, as a tenant is, you know, hopefully based on, on a future, uh, you know, solution, you know, to to that property. And and uh, so, you know, we're not dealing directly with the property owner and dealing with, you know, directly. With, uh, I'm sure the property owner would want to do whatever makes them the best amount of money, whether it be this or whether it be that. You know that. When I say that, I, who knows what, you know what I mean? And uh, so, uh, those are my concerns. I think if you're the owner and you're making a commitment today to buy the property, and you, you brought your plans up there, you know, I think I think I look at it quite differently. Maybe Commissioner still already, I think he asked this, but I don't know if it was. When the city council, this one, to the city council, they suggested possible options. Is this, this one of the things they recommended? Was there a list of things that were recommended, or was it just just re revisit it? Revisit it in a different way that it wasn't uh, for the entire zone. I see. see, if it were me, I would attempt to rezone it, considering it's right next to the other zone. But the problem is, <coughs> that the zone that's across the street. It's across Center Street that would allow it, but it's not across Six West, right? right? So that doesn't solve that problem. But I, I'm not there with this one yet. I'd like to, Jennifer. I'd like to hear what your comments are, if you're if you're, if you're willing. Well, you know, I'm I'm huge on property rights. So right. So and I can and I can everybody, everybody is aware of that. Um, my thing is, if you put an overall light both over this property that is currently not conforming, doesn't that make it no longer not conforming? Uh, with what it's currently doing with auto repair, no. Uh, that <coughs> is a non conforming use of this auto sales order that does not anticipate or be permitted, but as long as they continue with that, then it continue as a, uh, a non conforming use. So, uh, grandfather views it. But part of the part, part of the property would then become conforming as far as the as far as auto sales. Auto sales. But for that matter, we could go ahead and we could just make auto repair okay right there too. And then we could make it all conforming, but it wouldn't meet the, the, the intent of the zone. That's what I'm going to this for. That was, that's an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an approved option. And I'm going to go with the property rights on this one and it's approved um, option. And that's what I'm going to do. Any other remarks? 
works. I kind of feel like this is um, similar to some of the issues we've had. Conditional use permits, where you know, if the city council wants to allow it, then they should allow it. And if they don't, then they shouldn't. And they shouldn't be carving out these exceptions because that just opens you up to always approving the exception. Um, that's my general impression. Of what you're saying. That's my I, I mean, I think you could go ahead and you could put this in as a Auto sales has a conditional use within that zone. And then we could come and talk about, well, what are you going to do to mitigate the impact compared to what the, you know, full intent of the zone is or whatever like you want to do. But I don't like changing the zone, zone just for one thing. I mean, if, if, otherwise, we could just talk the zoning out. So uh, is anybody prepared to make another motion? Mr. I'll make a motion. Okay. I move the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council um, deny the request of J.D. Brist for the creation of City Code Section 10-13C Automobile Sales Overlay and to allow, and, well, I, right, so. yeah, I, I, I know, yeah. I move the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council deny the request of J.D. Brisk for the creation of the, of the City Code Section 10-13C Automobile Sales Overlay. Okay, we got a motion from Commissioner Adams to have a second. Do we want to list findings about that? Is there any other reasons? Yeah, we, we need to. Okay. We need to get the, we need a, sec a second first before we... No, it should be part of the motion, so go ahead and put that in there because that's going to be part of what we'll vote on. Yeah. Um, inconsistent with the, uh, the purpose of the, of the zone, the intent of the zone. Say that again, Amy. Um, it would not meet the intent of the underlying downtown village zone. Doing an overlay would um, could possibly establish a precedent that would weaken our <coughs> commitment to our zoning ordinances. Okay. Third time's a charm, right? Okay. Let's give it a shot. Try this one more time. Mr. Chair, <coughs> I move the Planning Commission. Recommend that the City Council deny the request of J.D. Brisk for the creation of City Code Section 10-13C <coughs> Automobile Sales Overlay based on the following findings of fact. Uh, the, uh, the Commission has found that um, allowing an automobile sales overlay uh, would be inconsistent with the intent of the underlying downtown village zone. Um, uh, a finding that the City Council has already deliberately excluded auto sales from the current zone and that by allowing a overlay uh, we would be setting a precedent for other um, owners to essentially carve out um, exceptions to certain things that have already been expressly restricted in that zone. Okay, we got a uh, motion from Commissioner Adams to have a second. Second. A second from Commissioner Steele. <coughs> um, all those in favor? Let's indicate by the raise of hands here. Okay. Aye. Okay. Aye. So, um, yeah, the minutes can't hear the hands. The Commissioner is going to go ahead and repeat everybody. So, Commissioner Neidegger, Aye. Commissioner Steele, Commissioner Adams, Commissioner Richards, uh, and Commissioner Here, it's hard to keep track of I know. Uh, Cardin and Commissioner Armstrong are yeas, and Commissioner Baptista is presenting me. Okay, sorry that one fails. Let's move forward with the next one, which is this, this item will go forward to City Council on December 1st. Uh, the next one, yeah. Oh. And uh, let the record 
um, show that Mr. Coons has, has rejoined the commission. Um, this is a, a public hearing for a conditional use permit to consider a request at, at 60 East, 1200 North in the Northfield subdivision. Um, public hearing to consider a request by Joe Gephardt for the conditional use permit to expand the number of allowed residents in an assisted living center on property located in approximately 60 East, 1200 North in the R18 single family residential zone. All right. So this is a revision of the conditional use permit. <coughs> so originally in 1991, there was a conditional use permit that was uh, granted for this home. And uh, to be an assisted living center, that time it was a beehive home, which is, uh, uh, it's not a beehive home anymore, um, but same type of facility. And so um, that was granted and then updated in 2007 to restrict it to eight people uh, living in the home. So uh, doing research on that, um, the old code and the old staff report didn't state any reason for why it was eight people. Um, the staff community assumed it was the reason. And so since there wasn't any, any uh, hard evidence as to why it was restricted to eight, um, the applicant, well, it's not the reason the applicant has requested nine, but the applicant has requested nine. And uh, so we've, we've done some research and the applicant provided us a state code um, which allows for up to 16 people in this type of facility. And so um, because he's operating it currently with nine, um, was approved for eight, that's why we're here doing it. Um, so since the, code, the state code allows for up to 16, I don't feel like 16 is necessarily the best thing for the property. It's, it's pretty maxed out as far as the home. So as you can see the property is, or the applicant provided this drawing on the property to show uh, what's being utilized. So you have five bedrooms on this side and, uh, oh sorry, six bedrooms and then three more on this side. And then the rest of the area is uh, either utilized for open space, living rooms, um, kitchens, and so on. Uh, so the house is pretty well maxed out as far as size for nine uh, people. So we feel like that is a good good limit to put on this condition of use permit. Um, we know that there are concerns from neighbors as there were previously. Um, well, I'm not going to say there's concerns from neighbors. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. But um, if there are, that was one of the issues um, that came up was the number of people that was, were living there. Which is why uh, it's my opinion that uh, it was limited to eight because of concerns of neighbors. So, again, I'm not sure on that. Anyway, so we feel like because there's um, nine bedrooms here currently in the, in the house and the, there's room for more, um, more people to live there, I feel like that's a good number. Um, the difference between eight and nine, uh, staff can't really see the reason why there's a significant difference between the two on the impact of the neighborhood. Uh, where this is an assisted living center, these aren't uh, you know, high traffic, uh, high noise type of uh, people that are going to be living here. So, um, as you can see down at the bottom, the yeah, applicant's provided this uh, it's drawing showing a 40 foot by 40 foot driveway, which has more than the five required parking spaces for a facility of this size. <coughs> um, and uh, so, based on the fact that it does meet the code, uh, and it also meets state code, we don't have a city code that restricts the number of at uh, people living in these types of facilities. So um, based on the fact that it meets all the requirements, we recommend approval of this increase from eight to nine. So are there any questions on the commission? Questions? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Rice. Um, is applicant present? Yes. <coughs> My name is uh, Joseph Gephardt. I live at 1160 West, 2600 North, Pleasant Grove. This is one of our facilities. Um, this facility was bought in bankruptcy in 2008, um, shut down by the state, and uh, we brought it all up to code. We've always been under the impression it was a nine bedroom. It is a nine bedroom. It was purposely built for nine bedroom. Eleven residents. The two. The room number one is a couple's room. The patio outside that. But we've always operated as that. We've never, we didn't know this until we sold it. And um, so we went back to Sean, who was the, uh, one of the um, city guys at the time, and he didn't know why. There was some glitch because this was the first one built here. So that was it. So we checked a few other ones, looked at the property. We're almost double the size of the property, um, double the parking as another one that was in the area. We haven't changed anything. It was purposely built for that process. 
and uh, for that use, and we're not adding any square footage. It's, it is what it is, and we've been licensed by the state for uh, ten units. Uh, you know, it's always been licensed for ten units, but something happened back in '91 or '92 when it was built. We were not sure, and Sean wasn't sure what. That's about it. Any questions for him? Yeah, we're not we're not adding anything on. We're not adding more people or anything else. It's just a glitch somewhere in the paper. Why? Why? I, I have a question. Why are you asking us for nine if if the room number one is the couple's room? It's, I it's I saw one bed. of these last year. So oh yeah, no, it was um, the city has it for some reason. The new owner can't get his license from the city because they have it licensed in eight, uh -huh. and we didn't know why. We actually I did, I went back and called Sean and. Uh, he couldn't figure it out either. He said there was a glitch, but that's when I went and measured other places and made sure we were all in um, compliance. Okay. But uh, I guess it was always like that. We bought it like that and had been sold four times like that. I, yeah, sorry, I think the question is how come you're not asking for 10? If, if, it's only a nine better. Okay. Yeah, it's only a nine better. It was built for nine better, but they kind of have the taste. But it's, you know, you get an extra resident, and we're licensed by the state for the couple groups. Right, okay. Which there's no, please don't. Okay. So, so I think perhaps there was a little bit of misunderstanding as to are we talking residents, are we talking bedrooms. I think we assumed that one resident per bedroom. So, as he clarified here tonight, is it one unit that is a double? Yeah, when you uh, room number one, it's a double the size of the so other it's, it's, it's own bathroom, it's own patio. You said there's eleven residents. No. So there's ten residents. There's the nine house? residents. If there's you nine. added one more, it'd be two. Yes, and that's what we're licensed for. If you had a couple in there. So you might want to just clarify that uh, there are nine bedrooms mm -hmm. that would allow it. Ten bedrooms. Let's do that. It's always been like that. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. I think we don't have any more questions for you. Are any of the neighbors and the public want to come speak to this one? Commissioners, okay. my name is Chris Julian. I reside at 1582 Bridlebrook Circle in Salt Lake City. Uh, I am potentially the new owner of this facility. Um, I think actually based on our decision here tonight, I think uh, I just want to lend my support that. Uh, the new license uh, issued by the state doesn't need to say 10, 10 residents, and uh, that's the finding of their surveyors and licenses come out. And uh, this is what they will do and what they recommend. So. I think the only thing we'd be concerned about is whether it's bugging the neighbors or not. Sure. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak to this one? Okay, we'll close the public session and bring it back up here. You guys go around it. It's the state law allows for up to 16. You got it. Uh, they're asking for 10, right? That's I think the state has gone ahead and approved them at 10 based 10 on already. size, so yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah. That okay. makes sense, huh? Yeah. So 10 instead of 9. Yeah. Would somebody like to make the motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that I move to move the planning commission approve the request of Joe Gephardt for a conditional use permit allowing a conditional use permit. So, so, uh, allowing. The request of Joe, Joe Gephardt allowing a conditional use permit for an assisted living center for up to 10 residents um, on property located at 60 East, 1200 North <coughs> in the R18 single family residential zone. Um, 10 residents meaning there's nine bedrooms, but one of the bedrooms is a double, which would allow up to 10. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion from Commissioner Richards and a second from. Commissioner Coons, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Thanks. And now this will go forward or no? No. It's this done. is done. Got it. So we go on to the next one. And the next one is the reason that all you guys were in this song. Um, some of you guys know, we as commissioners have spent a lot of late, long nights working on this trying to go ahead and see if we can anticipate most of the of the concerns that all of us would have and talk to neighbors and friends and family and everybody about this one. So we've done a lot of work for about a year on it. So um, this one is a public hearing city for a city code text amendment citywide. Public hearing to consider a request by the Pleasant Grove City for a proposed text amendment creating 
City Code Section 10-15-47 and amending Sections 10-6-2, Definitions 10-9A-2, Permitted Conditional and Accessory Uses, 10-9B-2, Permitted Conditional and Accessory Uses, and 10-9C-2, Permitted Conditional and Accessory Uses, and 10-14-24-2-C, Permitted Conditional and Accessory Uses, Permitting Accessory Apartments in the Pleasant Grove City Code. Okay, so we can hang on to that slide for a second. Um, so just kind of like explain the background here. Uh, so as, as uh, Chair Armstrong mentioned, we're, we're working on this as a city request to the city council. Um, this has kind of been an on and off thing for the last maybe 15 years or so. And uh, really a lot more intensely researched in the last year and a half. Um, so since I've been here, August of last year, um, I've worked with the neighborhood committees um, and we discussed the potential uh, code to come up with and see what the uh, concerns were from people in various neighborhoods as they talked to the neighborhood chairs. Um, and then we've also, as we've been mentioned, worked uh, really extensively with the planning commission and the city council and trying to find answers to questions and concerns that have been brought up by residents and uh, looking at the potential pros and cons of allowing for accessory apartments versus, versus continuing with what we're doing. So what we're doing right now is uh, we don't allow them, um, but we don't actively enforce it. We don't go out looking for people with accessory apartments because we just don't have the manpower for that. So the state legislature has upheld uh, for code enforcement in the state of Utah that we can do uh, enforcement based on complaint basis. And so that's what we do. So if somebody comes in with a complaint about an accessory apartment, we'll go in and work with that property owner to bring it into compliance or to uh, remove the apartment, um, whatever it may be. But we do have some in the city that are legal. Uh, back prior to 1985, we used to permit two family dogs in several areas in the downtown area. Um, so basically what this is, um, is it's going to be focused on providing housing for people um, who don't maybe have the opportunity to live uh, in this area otherwise. So um, from a planning standpoint, we're always looking for opportunities to help people to live and work closer together, um, to be able to provide affordable housing for people, and uh, to be able to make it so that we have more housing equality. So uh, kind of going over some numbers real quick. Um, between 2009 and 2013, uh, the median, ho median household income <coughs> in Utah County was uh, $212,800. So um, for Pleasant Grove, that's, it's higher, um, or sorry, the median, that's, that's the median uh, home value. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, so that's considerably different. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, all right, so median income, though, uh, in the county was $58,821. Uh, so um, when you break that down by age, um, under 25, you have 26,944. 25 to 44 years is 65,128. And 45 to 64 years is 77,061. So um, with those differences, uh, it's pretty significant. Um, the average age in Pleasant Grove is about 25. That's the median age. Um, so given that that's kind of a little bit unevenly balanced because we have a lot of minors, about 41% of the city is under 18, so, um, however, uh, based on that, you can figure that there's probably a lot of younger families with children that live in the city, um, and it's a pretty safe assumption to make. So, um, more likely, in, in looking at the data, if you see the numbers of people that are in these age groups, the majority of people are going to be closer to the 25 and under age, uh, age group for, for income, which is that uh, 26,000. So, roughly 26 to 35-ish. So, um, based on that, the uh, Utah or the United States Department of Urban Housing, uh, Housing and Urban Development, says that families who pay more than 30% of their income for housing are considered cost burden. So, that's kind of the, the maximum that we look at. So, I kind of use that as a benchmark. Um, so, if we're looking at 30% of your income for housing, what that basically says is if you make, um, let's see if I know. So for, well, for a house in Pleasant Grove, the median housing cost is going to be $224,797. Um, 
That's for everything. Um, so if you're looking at single family homes, it's considerably higher at 287,325, which is 26% higher than the county average. So um, well, housing is more expensive here than it is generally in the county, but we have a wide range of housing uh, costs in the county. So if you have a, let's see, for a house that costs the 224, the average for all the housing in Pleasant Grove, that takes in uh, condos, townhouses, uh, single family homes, really everything. If you have a 30 year mortgage with a 5% interest rate, 10% down payment, you're looking at about 1,086 uh, a month. So um, if you go for a single family home with that median cost in Pleasant Grove, the cost raises to 1388 a month for that house. So uh, it's considerably high uh, based on the, the county and, and what, uh, what the costs are. So basically, um, let's see, one in three people in Utah County makes $40,000 or less. So a third of our county does. So um, basically to buy a house in Pleasant Grove uh, presents a significant financial burden. So half of that group, which would be 15% of the county are looking at paying half or more of their income to buy a house in Pleasant Grove at the median. And I know that there's differences, but uh, the median is what it is. So, let's see. Um, now, it, given that that's buying a home, so if you're looking at the rent, the median rent in 2013 in Pleasant Grove is 1,081 per month, which is almost the same as those mortgage payment amounts. So what we're looking at is, uh, you know, we've worked at providing affordable housing in the city, and I feel like we've been fairly successful with that. Um, but there are some, some areas in the city, like the, the Grove Zone area on the southwest, where rents are still pretty high. We're looking at between $900 to $1,500 a month, uh, as, as, and the median being about $1,200. So um, not exactly what we consider affordable housing, um, because, again, you have to make $45,000 plus to live out there. So anyway, long explanation, but uh, that kind of gives like a foundation for why accessory apartments are, are a good thing. So if we can go to the next slide. So the proposed ordinance basically says that if you want to have an accessory apartment, talking like single family homes, it provides an opportunity for people to uh, provide more affordable housing for like young couples, uh, older couples, people on fixed incomes who wouldn't otherwise be able to live in the city. Uh, who may work in the city or work close by, but they may otherwise be stuck living in an outlying city with higher transportation costs driving to and fro. So um, what we require is that if you're going to rent out, say, your basement or your attic or whatever, um, that you have to live in the home. So it has to be owner-occupied. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, so it can be attached to the home or it uh, can be detached, uh, what we propose. So, Somebody has a large enough property where they can have an accessory building that would be big enough to have an accessory apartment, they could do that. Um, let's go to the next one. So, different types of occupancy. This is for an accessory apartment on top of what's allowed in the home. And, and keep in mind that this is mirroring what's already permitted in the home. So, everything that you see here would also be permitted in the main dwelling. So, you can have one person by themselves, two related people. Um, you can have four people that are unrelated. Is the top one there, or you can have any of those plus one guest that can be there for no more than 30 days. So um, what that does is it makes it so that really it's just it's an accessory dwelling unit it has the same uh, general density as, as what's allowed in the primary unit. Let's go to the next one. So permitted areas in the zone, um, in the agricultural zone, which is way up north, we have a very small section of that up above the Manila Pond. The RR, uh, Rural Residential Zone, which is about the top half of the city area. Uh, the R1, Single Family Residential Zone, which is the bottom, uh, bottom east section, pretty much east of State Street. And then the RM7, uh, Medium Multiple Family Residential, which is kind of down south of downtown. Uh, the Downtown Village Zone, which is the downtown area. And then the Grove Mixed Housing Zone, which is out west of State Street uh, in a couple of selected areas. So going through the rest of the code, I apologize, I don't have any more pictures, I ran out of time. But uh, we have, uh, uh, so, so only one apartment would be allowed per property. So for example, let's say you had a, an acre property up in the RR zone, you couldn't rent out your basement and have an accessory building um, 
or you couldn't have multiple apartments within the same building. So um, we've debated about that a lot, about property sizes, about house size, and determined that um, one accessory apartment, because we want it to be an accessory use to the primary use. You don't want to look at a house and say, oh, there's an accessory apartment there. It's, we want to surprise people, I guess. Um, so where they're allowed is over the garage, in the basement, and in addition, or in, as I mentioned earlier, in the detached accessory unit. Um, entrances uh, shouldn't allow for a duplex appearance. So what we mean by that is if you're looking at the front of a house, you don't want to have side-by-side -side front doors that one leads to the accessory apartment, one leads to the main dwelling. So um, if you're going to have an accessory apartment, traditionally, um, you know, you're looking at like a basement or an attic or something like that, and you want to have a separate access, it's, it's not making it again look like a duplex. You don't want it to have the appearance of a duplex. Um, addressing would be A and B for the primary and accessory apartment. So uh, if, you're, if your address is you know, 100 North State Street, you have 100A, and that's the primary dwelling. 100B would be the accessory apartment. And that's really for emergency services, helps them to be able to find people. Um, we don't want to have somebody having a heart attack in the basement and they, you know, well, they're, they're here, but, you know, where are they kind of thing. And so, and that has happened at times uh, in other cities. So, um, let's see. So, we, as far as off-street parking, this has been a considerable concern that's been brought up at, uh, many times. So, uh, currently, for a single-family home, we require four off-street parking, sp well, four, four off parking spaces, two in the garage, two on the driveway. And uh, <coughs> we're going to require two additional parking spaces off-street. So, those would have to be on a paved surface. So, whether that be off to the side of the garage or, or wherever, um, somebody can manage that, as long as it's not parked in the front yard area. Um, and then the, the living area must be different, or must be separate from the principal unit. So let's say you have a downstairs apartment, it needs to be separate, um, separate areas. So we're not looking at kind of communal style living where you would have like maybe renting out a room and then they use a kitchen and that kind of thing. They, they need to have their own kitchen and their own sleeping area. Um, so then we would also need to make sure that international building code is met. This is really just a life safety issue. Um, a lot of times uh, when we have accessory apartments or illegal duplexes, triplexes, and so on that are created, um, they kind of tend to be jerry-rigged, especially the electrical. Um, so I worked in Bountiful before this, and uh, there was a, a boy that was actually killed because somebody jerry-rigged the 220 uh, outlet to their washing machine or dryer and ended up electric electrocuting the kid. So it, you know, this is something that we want to make sure that people are, are doing things safely so that they better for their liability, but also just making sure that we maintain the safety of people in the city. Um, and then interior access must be maintained if it's attached, of course. So if you have like a, a basement, again, you have a stairwell down to your basement inside, you can't just wall that off. You need to make sure that's still openable, again, for emergency services. If they need to get in, they need to have ways to, to access the apartment. Um, Apartments cannot be sold. It kind of goes without saying. You can't sell off part of your property without creating another parcel. And so, but we just wanted to codify that so it's clear. Um, and then, as far as registration goes, it'd be a $25 one-time fee to cover our inspections, just making sure that the apartment's up to code. Um, and then, once this, uh, if this was approved, this uh, accessory apartment ordinance, we'd have a two-year period that would start up. Where people could come in and they register, and there would be no uh, no problems that would occur if they didn't. Basically, there would be no um, no fines or anything. Uh, but after that two-year period, in order to make sure to publicize everything and, and make sure it's clear, to people that accessory apartments are permitted, please come in and register. You know, if you don't have it registered after that two-year period, and somebody complains about it, and the city hears about it, then uh, it's codified that we could enact a one thousand dollar fine. Doesn't mean that will be necessarily, but, um, and then we'll determine what's out of compliance with it, and then look at potential for either additional fines or just working with you to improve the property and bring it up to code. So um, just kind of something to encourage people to come in and get them registered. So um, the home occupation businesses, which are just the home business, um, those would be allowed as long as there's no uh, customer traffic and they have a written um, and written permission from the uh, property owner. So basically, if somebody wants to work, live in the basement, have a home office, they can do that um, as long as they meet the requirements. 
So overall, it's pretty uh, pretty simple. I mean, we used to have a lot more stuff in here, um, this code, or we also had some things we've added, but it's been narrowed down quite a bit. Um, so we we don't want to over-regulate things. We also want to make sure that we're taking care of life safety issues and making sure that we have um, an opportunity for people who want to move into the city um, who maybe couldn't afford to do so otherwise, and they could do that. Um, so yeah, based on on the fact that all of these things are, uh, we've been heavily deliberated on, we've determined that these things are life safety issues. We want to make sure that we're creating the best situation that we can while still allowing for accessory apartments. We recommend approval of the ordinances. Okay, so any questions? Do you have any questions for Alex so far? Okay, okay, your eyes. Okay, <coughs> obviously, we've got a lot of people that are here for this one. Um, what I would like to ask you to do is to keep your remarks to no more than four or five minutes and um, two or three minutes and, uh, and please don't repeat a concern or a, a remark that somebody else has made um, so I don't hear the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and I, I'll open this up. Uh, you the time. So if anybody has a remark, just remember to stand up and, and give us your name and your current address so that we have that for the record. Frederick Reed, I live at 1382 East 370 North. My concern is this essentially eliminates single family zoning. Um, I specifically bought our home in the area because it's single family zone. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to live in a duplex or four foot, those buttons. Uh, we have a home in our area, it's 1198 East 300 North, that the original homeowner, whom we knew very well, built it specifically with three apartments in it, and a uh, current investor just bought it with the idea of renting it out three different ways. Uh, he's sent his, you know, the city, thankfully, has enforced his zoning laws, and he's put it back up on the market for sale. Um, that's my concern, is you allow one house to go duplex or threeplex, and pretty soon it's spread in higher subdivision, you no longer have single family residences zoned anywhere in the city. And so where in the city do you go to live in a subdivision of single family residences? That's, that's my concern. I mean, there, there is no, I mean, I appreciate Mr. Batiste's property right owners. Well, I'm a property owner myself, and <laughs> I bought specifically with the idea of having a single family zone residence. So um, there are certainly places in the city. I go up Center Street pretty much every day going home, and there are plenty of very nice and attractive multiple family residences, and if people wish to live in an area like that, then there are places owned in the city for that already. So I don't see any reason to have a city where you have no single family residences, period, anywhere in the city at all after that. So. I mean, so you're aware the proposed ordinance will allow the, the owner must live in the property in right. order to have, you, there, there's no such thing as a duplex going into a uh, single family zone. But each, but each owner could create a second apartment in his or her that's place. That's the proposed ordinance, yes, but not two of them. So the, that's, that's a proposed ordinance. That would eliminate ordinance. the one property here that does have the three residences in it. They wouldn't be able to be licensed for right. that. So, okay, thank you. Anybody else? On Mayo, 50 North, 1300 East. I don't have an auxiliary apartment in my basement, but as a real estate investor and a former realtor and broker, um, I too believe in private property rights. And in listening to what's been said in this meeting tonight on the different things, I would challenge all of you to come up with even five private property rights that we still have, other than the color of the paint we put on the walls or our carpet. We have to get approval for what we put on the property. We have to have approval for everything, okay? With enough of that said, this kind of thing is unenforceable. There's no way that you can regulate this and enforce this law. The only way you could do that is if you oh, mob, excuse me, I'm upset when I think about this. If you model Hitler, 
if you go totally socialistic, which we are doing in this country, this once great country is going down the toilet because we don't have private property rights anymore. Okay? Who I have living in my property is my business. Okay? If you're going to enforce this, you're going to have to have a force of Gestapo agents, code enforcement, whatever you want to call them, that are getting weekly search warrants to go through everybody's house every week to check and see what they're doing. As far as the safety issues and everything, yeah, there's safety issues. I, as a landlord, I have to go through the property when a tenant moves out, and I have to fix things because they jerry rigged things. Okay, that's an individual thing, okay, that somebody has messed up. But to be regulated constantly, every move I do, that is not government's place. Okay, a lot of these places, the people need someone living with them. I don't know what it is in Utah, but Utah has this love affair with huge houses. Okay? I have a couple of rental properties that I wish I hadn't bought at rental properties because they're too doggone big. When the tenants move out, I spend three weeks just painting the place because they're so big. And they could put a lot more people in. But the point of this is that this is not an enforceable thing. You cannot regulate it <coughs> without having a whole army of people to start finding people and, and all that, and asking people to complain about the neighbors, okay? I wish I would have brought it with me. I received a letter, okay, a couple of weeks ago, about one of my rental properties in another city, of a neighbor, or one of the neighbors, complaining about my tenant, and about how they have all these other families living with them, and living in a travel trailer in the driveway, and, all, and that they weren't taking care of stuff. Okay, I went down to the house, if I went eight houses either way, both sides of the street, and in fact, the letter said that the house property should be condemned, it was so bad. I went down the street, eight houses either way, there were at least six other properties that looked worse than mine, okay, and what the tenant was doing. I talked with the tenant, it's a mixed race family, nobody living in the trailer, no other family living in the house. Some, and I'll excuse the term, some self-righteous neighbor didn't know what was going on, complained. What does that do for neighborhood camaraderie? Okay? Personally, I was ready to take and make a copy of the letter and distribute it to all the neighbors say, someone in this neighborhood wrote this letter to me doesn't know what they're doing. You know, kind of thing. You know, all you're going to do if you have something like this is you're going to create animosity. Okay? I can appreciate people don't want a lot of people living in places. But, you know, if I want somebody living in my basement, that should be my right, my choice. So you're for this? No. I say scratch the whole stupid idea. If people want to do it, let them do it. Okay, so if, if you so right now, but you're not for what we have currently where we can't. I think you have no business have trying to regulate anything to do with it. Okay. I mean, it's, okay. A, it's, a, it's unenforceable. You okay. cannot do it. It's just it not going to happen. What's that? They're trying to make this allowable. You know what? Let's, let's just keep it. Well, it is being happened. What I'm saying is don't worry about it. Leave it alone. Oh. Okay. <laughs> appreciate your opinion. Thank you. All right. I just have a comment for you. Sure. Don't you appreciate that that neighbor came right to you instead of going to the city? It was an anonymous letter. How there would you was, feel about okay. an anonymous letter telling you that you're the scum of the earth because you've got a property that's so bad? Well, I think it's good that you went and checked it out. But, you know, they didn't, it was anonymous to you, maybe, but at least they didn't, I don't know, they didn't go to the police, they didn't try to get you fined, they were letting you know. Of okay, I'll respond to you again. Anyway, anonymous letters tell me people don't have the guts to talk to me. Okay, I got an anonymous letter, again, a years ago, from somebody that didn't know the situation, telling me how bad I was as a landlord, and so forth and so on, and they had no idea what the situation was. Okay. And I'm LDS, which I'm assuming some of you in here are too, and that letter came from somebody in my ward. How do you think I felt walking into church because somebody thought I was a scum of the earth and they didn't know what was going on? How do you think I felt? It shut me down emotionally for 12 years. So that's the kind of stuff. This is it's not enforceable. Just, just out of curiosity, are you Randy's dad? No, Brother? uncle. Uncle. Got it. Okay. I know him no longer. What's your name and your...
Ten millions, one seventy-five south, thirteen hundred east. Um, I live in an R1 zone, and opposite of him, I want to be able to have an accessory apartment. Um, we were talking about affordability of people being able to afford to live in the cities, and we're talking about these young people. I'm getting close to retirement age. I cannot stay in this city unless I have an accessory apartment because my home is not paid for. So I have an acre of property. I want to be able to have an accessory apartment on it. I don't want to have to go underground. I agree with Vaughn on 90% of what he said here. I feel like if, if everybody knew how many accessory apartments are in here right now, check your wards. You know, I'll bet you in my ward, I'll bet you there's at least 10. And I'll bet you there's a lot of elderly people that have <coughs> those that cannot get by without that. That's what I'm concerned about. I don't like the regulation either, but I also feel like, you know, Salt Lake right now is trying to loosen their accessory apartment restrictions because they realize that there's a need for people to be able to afford them and for people to be able to stay in their houses. And we right here are trying to do the opposite. And when I looked through all of the papers and stuff on this, it appeared to me that you guys were trying to be a landlord's landlord. And I didn't like what I was doing there. I can understand you're wanting to have an idealized, perfect ordinance, but I would bond. I don't agree that it's your business. Sorry to offend, but you know, stay out of my house, stay out of my bedroom, stay off my property, and let me regulate. And I will take care of making sure that you guys know who's in my property, but I don't like being controlled by city government. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready or not because I don't have exact wording of the ordinances. What's that your name? Oh, oh Melanie Pryor, 640 South Spruce Street. Okay. Um, I don't have the exact wording of the ordinances that are conflicting with accessory apartments or the exact wording that the ordinance, new ordinance will include. However, I get the idea that um, with the ordinances that exist, we have to accept the idea that regulation has to be possible in some way. So my question is if the new ordinance wording is going to allow for that and if it will improve it, if we're not able to regulate or if we're not able to enforce um, to enforce the requirements of the existing ordinances, adding additional wording may not improve a situation. So if we want to allow for accessory apartments in exact wording and be specific and accurate and have it written there, then I think that we could look at having fewer things that need to be regulated. In other words, not in regard to the number of people necessarily, because that's not a, that's not a reasonable thing to regulate. But, uh, hold on. I, I, would you like some response as you go on? Because we've worked yeah. on this ordinance I, I, in depth I, a long, I don't long know time. if I'm coming across as grateful, but I'm very thankful for it, the time and need that have been required to see this process, and I am so exceptionally thankful that we all get to be a part of it. I think this is one of the fundamental things that we see as a display for rights of individuals in the country. Mm -hmm. So, but and, and, and I appreciate that. The thing I'm concerned about is that as you stand there, if you don't understand something, if you're bringing something up as a concern, that because it, it flashed up on the screen for a second and you didn't right. get a chance to read through it really carefully. No, what I mean is that, okay, so Mr. Davies was, yeah. was saying that the, the idea of the new ordinance might include the number of people, and if there's a guest that stays, they can stay for 30 days or I less. understand that's the same regulation that we have for your current house right now. Okay, that's so. the thing. I wouldn't know that. There's so many ordinances that the city includes. No one knows all of the ordinances. And if we're unable to enforce them, <laughs> if the, I mean, <coughs> some people may know all the ordinances. Most people do not know all the ordinances. None of us in this room. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and to the other intent, the intent of ordinances is to keep us timely 
and neighborly and friendly and, and secure peace in the community. So I don't feel like the wording of a new ordinance is prepared to, to enhance <coughs> that necessarily, as far as it is imposing on the individual's rights to, to do with their property what okay. is necessary to keep their... Let me, let me respond to that a little bit. The gentleman that's behind you, Fred, I think. See, the idea behind the ordinances is, and what we've tried to do is to balance this so that the neighbor is not so impacted by the decisions that are made by the, the person who wants to, say, have an accessory apartment. So that there is some sort of a, a balance between, in order to keep us neighborly. That's the whole right. point behind this. To is keep to make us it to, so, to keep the client commission neighborly no, to make it so that you and your next door neighbor don't have a problem with each other where you balance the the right to, to quiet enjoyment of your property, of his property, with your right to use your property as you deem fit. See, the problem is, is that if your neighbor over here is like, they, they've got six accessory apartments next to that There needs to be some point that, that, that there's a balance right. where he can say, help me. This is crazy. I've got 18 cars parked in the street. I'm and, not opposed to okay. additional ordinance. It's just the wording we choose and the amount of reasonably regulated things we choose to put there. Right. So okay. the only thing I considered is if we're going to make a change in the decision, which it seems like this is the point we've met, been 15 years and we want a new word in there we want it to be more specific that if an accessory building is not in conflict with any other ordinances then let's let it be there and that's it okay. that, <laughs> that's, that's it. what we that's what we, so you know that's what we is try to it? do okay we work very hard and and you know we have it, 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 I mean, it's been a discussion that's gone back and forth, and we spent a lot of evenings, and, and, and a lot of us, there are several of us here that are, I mean, we've got attorney on the commission, we've got several of us that are realtors who, who have been selling real estate for, I think, all of us more than 10 years, and, and we, so we looked at ordinances in Provo, and we looked at them in Orem, and we looked at them in Linden, and we looked at them in Highland, and we, we looked at all those different ordinances, and you know what? Most of them we find are too onerous. They're too um, strict, and they don't allow for enough in terms of, of property rights. But we try. I, I'll tell you, all of us, I think, will say that we tried to strike a balance that would work by protecting individuals' property rights okay. and and protecting the, your neighbor's quiet enjoyment of his property because he bought it with an expectation as well. So. Well, I promise you, we have agonized over that, and and it's not. Sometimes it's not fun because the city council says you guys go do it and come back to us. Okay. But that's our job, so that's what we that's what we've attempted to do. Okay, so the new ordinance, um, the proposal is that there are two parking spaces required on the right shore, yes. and the two room, additional two additional two additional parking spaces required on site, and by that, could someone RV parking, yes. and that could be the two additional. So, okay. Um, another question is, as far as the publicizing of the ordinance or the change in the ordinance, is that going to happen two years after, or when the ordinance changes, and then the people who are a part of the ordinance change be able to see it, and they have two years That's to right. come in compliance. That, that's what we want to do. That's why. Okay, so the publication will happen at the time of the ordinance change, not two years after. Okay, as a matter of fact, we tried to. I mean, you may have found out about this from your newsletter. I don't know. How did you find out that we were doing this? So we we've had this ready for a long, long time, actually, a, well, a month and a half maybe. But we <coughs> pushed it off because we wanted to make sure that we had the ability to put it in the newsletter and put it out on the website and put it some different places to let you come and give us your input. So, because this is important to us. Um, and, and once, so the next step beyond this and the next place that people can have some input is at the city council meeting. And they, they obviously are your elected representatives and so they have the final say. But um, 
um, after that, then we will get it out to where everybody really knows about it. And then we have that two-year period so people can get registered over a two-year period and, and come and learn about it and make sure that they're in compliance with it and understand it before there's going to be any fining anybody. But we do want to have some way to say, look, you know, we've encouraged you to actually pay a little bit of attention to the fact that now we do have, have an ordinance in place. Okay. So, okay. so from your perspective, the actual changes of the way that the ordinance will be read because it's an additional actual amendment Changes Not several places the in the code. Okay, it changes several places. So what are the exact changes? That's parking? Or what are the... I know he just... Mike just asked me what he just showed us. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe okay. I can answer. Sure. So it, it creates an entirely new section defining an accessory apartment and what is allowed and what, what's required. And then it also changes the section So that's, that's why there are changes in multiple places, because okay. it's allowing that to be so, and then it reverts back to that definition. And those All right. Sure. Yeah. This is, uh, as, as Bruce said, we've been working on this for months in planning commission days. And, and I encourage everybody here to regularly look at the agendas of those things, because you can be part of that, not just tonight, but you know throughout the whole process. You know, in fact, we even had a city council meeting uh, where the majority of the meeting was, was focused on this. And, 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 and so, and yes, we got busy lives every which way, and, but, you know, we need to also be aware of, of some of the other areas, uh, you know, what's going on in our city. You know, and to, or we don't want it to be a surprise to anybody, but there's, a, there's an opportunity, I think, in, 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 the, in the preliminary stages to really add some Oftentimes when we discuss this, there's nobody in the audience. Nobody. Also, <laughs> there's a city council meeting on Tuesday. And that's where it's going to go down. So we'll make a recommendation to the council and then the council will make I think what we're going to do, well, we, lots of people can stand up. If, if you want to make a remark, though, you've got to come and get on record. Yeah. I think what we'll do is, in, in, is let's go ahead and let's take each of your concerns and Commissioner Adams is taking detailed notes and then we'll try to answer as many questions about this as we can all at one one big shot and then if we don't cover it then raise your hand and and let's see if we can kind of review it again quick go ahead I'm John Pryor okay. South Bruce Street um, just wanted to start off I'm I'm a public educator and I work close with the administration, so I feel you're getting rocks thrown at you right now. And at the very beginning, at the beginning, I appreciate, I appreciate that you stated that you have put lots of hours. And this is my first time ever being in here. And so, um, personally, I, I plan on, hopefully, if we have lots of little kids and we're paying a babysitter to be here right now. So, I, I would like to be more involved in it, and it and I, gives me hope. Um, seeing how you've handled everything tonight. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, um, yes, I agree with the whole we're losing our power, but I also understand that you are just trying to balance because we are different minded people. And so, my comment is not a concern. Concerns have been addressed, if I had any. So, I just wanted to. Well, thank you. Yeah. Good. Any more remarks? Stephen Moon, 895 South, 1550 East, Love and Grove. I was on the committee that helped draft where you ended up. I can tell there's a few things that have been added <coughs> that surprised me because in our discussion we decided they wouldn't fit. The, uh, the AB addresses, um, the committee that was actually in favor of those things, and we were told that they were tactical and we couldn't do them. So, a little bit surprising that way. Um, all these concerns were addressed. 
the one thing that wasn't addressed. I don't think anybody on the committee found anybody that opposed apartments. They felt like there were so many of them it ought to be illegal not to have one. But um, this one thing that hasn't been mentioned greatly, I think it's kind of tiptoed around, but this becomes a great source of income for those that are going through a divorce or widows and widowers, and there's a lot of those. I mean, none of us know when we're going to be put in those situations. It helped me. It was the only way that I could get into a home. I was already paying a mortgage payment and supporting my children. I literally was paying a mortgage payment for my children to stay in the home with their mother. And so having an apartment became essential for me. And the majority of them that we on the committee were aware of were the same thing. People needed the second income. Thank you. Anybody else? My name is Art Brownlee, and I live at 865 South, 1500 East. Um, I, I really, really appreciated the opening remarks, the opening say, philosophy or orientation for accessory departments. Um, it shows a respect for the citizens of this of the city and a compassion for people's needs. Um, I wanted to just make some comments. Um, so, um, one thing that's one thing that's really bothered me is, is watching apartments and such, and, and I'm LDS and Tenement Church, and, and people in apartments are so lost and so separate, and so transitory, and home teaching levels are so low um, that um, people are are very separated from each other. I think I think what what you're doing here with the accessory department, um, you ordinances, is going to help, is going to make Pleasant Grove a much more um, community oriented, family oriented um, kind of city. Um, I think it's I think it's a very very positive thing for the, for the uh, dem demographics of the city. Um, I, I'm a senior, and uh, and I will absolutely need to have an apartment that can help support us uh, after I retire. And um, I think the I think as as such the the aging you know that that will make it possible for me to stay in Pleasant Grove. And I think the aging community contributes strength to the to the whole to the whole city. I think, uh, I think it makes a much healthier. Environment, um, and you know, there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of commitment, a lot of service that uh, all the other people provide and do provide, and, and wisdom. Um, and uh, so I, that's basically my opinion. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Any other remarks? Anyone about something? Go ahead. <coughs> I'll, uh, Scott Scholl, 213 North 800 East Pleasant Grove. I'll uh, represent the cellar dweller, so to speak. My wife and I live in a basement apartment. Um, granted, it's my mother-in-law's, so we're exempt as currently um, uh, codified, so to speak. Um, but we pay her mortgage, basically. Um, she's been forced into retirement from BYU after 20 years. Just or four years ago, lost her husband over the summer, so she's lost half of her income. Um, so to several points that have been made, um, we're making her mortgage payment, and when we move out on our own within the next year or so, hopefully, someone else will need to step in and, and make that payment for her until we can convince her to sell that out, <laughs> which isn't happening anytime soon. Um, but another question I had, the 
the different addresses, the A and B. We looked into that at one point with the post office, and they said the only way to do that is to have separate utilities. The only way to have separate utilities is to have an additional meter, right? How is that being addressed? I think that this will change that, because this is, this is the way that the city is going to address it. So it's a city, not a post office ordinance or federal regulation. I think I think it is. It's this. It's the city, and see the city. Uh, I mean, in the past, they've looked at that, and with the with like a fourplex or a duplex, they're looking at it based on show me your show me your bill. You know, show me your water or your gas bill. Um, when this becomes, it, if the code changes to where this becomes the new code, then this is going to be. The way that I mean, obviously, it will be a change from the post office. I think it'd be a good one. But so we could go to the post office and say 213A, 213B, but still have one yeah. utility bill that we split out however yeah. we want. I'm sure it's going to take a little while for them to get it. Yeah. yeah. The post office does not assign addresses to the city. I, <laughs> so, I, I tell I tell the post office this is the address right. for the property. Mm -hmm. So in commercial property, it's not unusual for somebody to have a space that they have a tenant in. <coughs> they have ten thousand square feet. That tenant moves, and now I have three tenants, and they only want three thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. And so where I have an address, and I have A, perhaps now I need A, B, and C. So I just simply let the post office know that this property now has three addresses. They need three mailboxes. There may be some cost to you involved in that. But the city makes the determination that this is what the address is. And that was one of the things that we considered when we said, let's make it so that the addresses are separate. The other thing that we're concerned about is we talked to the fire department and the police department. Here I'm answering questions that I said I wasn't going to. But um, but it, it is is that they've responded to to emergencies in different places and not known that there was an accessory apartment. So they're knocking on all upstairs doors and they don't know that somebody's having a heart attack in the basement. So the, the, the idea behind the different addressing is designed to help them understand where they're going to and what they're responding to. So my, my other uh, concern slash comment, when the house was built, it was built with that in mind to have family in the basement at all times and trying to accommodate the parking issue so we did a well you know we did a little driveway off to the side um, and developers whoever I don't know who that specifically kind of chewed, chewed my in-laws out for building a driveway and, and trying to do that in fact they dug up half of what the, the asphalt they had already laid um, I don't know if it was a plan or whatever, but I guess to, to the parking issue, that would be my other concern is how that's being addressed. But again, in your, in your, I'll sit down and in your, in your quest, in your answer period, you can address that. Okay. Anybody else? Well, if that's it, we'll close <laughs> Time last time, we need to go longer. <laughs> My name is Rich Warburg, and I live uh, 1025 East 100 North. Um, I do have a mother in law's apartment in there, and I, I did set it up for that, registered with the city, did what I was asked to do, and um, I have my mother in law in there, thank goodness, but she's not here to listen to that. So, um, But I, I left it vacant for when I first moved in, and only thing that spurred a, a renter was somebody was in, that was in need, and um, there was no no rent that was in a gap gathered for that. But it's but it's turned into a good thing that I think has helped somebody get some young students, and I'm on their the third ones in there, and um, I, I think it's been a good thing for that. But the the rules and regulations that's put here. Um, I agree with most of them. My question is, uh, what, and maybe it's up above, but what would you do if somebody didn't conform to those? I see the $1,000 fine if, or could be, um, if they don't 
register it within that first two years, but just a question to go read through that just wonder what will happen if somebody did come from. Thanks, sir. Wow. Any, any more before we close the public remarks section of this down and start responding? Now, when we're going to try to answer some of these questions, I think it's probably fair for you to say, okay, I'm still not clear on that. Um, we're not going to completely shut it down, but we won't have you come back up and bring up any more concerns as of now, if you're all right with that. So, okay. Um, oh, why don't we have uh, Ken respond to you to begin with, Rich? As far as that goes, um, you have the nonconformity issue after the after they've got the two year period, and if you're still not in, in, in conforming, and your neighbor says these guys have an apartment, is it registered? Because they're complaining. Say what happens? Then? It wouldn't be any different really than what it is right now. So we have, uh, and, and this is just a clarification for those people who think, oh, by adding all these regulations on. Then you're you're doing something different. You're you're making it more difficult for us to have an apartment. Well, I don't know if that's the case because currently the code doesn't permit them. Period. And uh, we we can and have enforced issues where someone has an accessory apartment and, and had to shut it down. Now, that hasn't had happened very often, especially not recently because we've been in this process of reviewing. So we've been a little bit more tolerant as far as enforcement is concerned. However, it is my opinion that should we not approve this ordinance, we may get into a discussion of how we shall enforce the current situation more clearly than what we have been, because we've kind of been in limbo right now. So we might uh, discuss further how we might crack down on apartments that are illegal, which is basically all accessory apartments in Pleasantville right now almost are almost all are illegal because they have not been approved by the city unless they were approved this code uh, or in a zone which currently allows it, such as the downtown village zone. Otherwise, if you're in a regular single family neighborhood zone and your house was built after 1985 and you have an accessory apartment, it's not permitted by the city. So we could actually get a lot more strict and um, cause a lot more problems in the community by shutting down tons of accessory apartments. So what we're trying to do is not that, but to provide a, a method <coughs> whereby these apartments that have not been recognized as being legal by the city can now be permitted. So we can't just say willy-nilly, it doesn't matter, we don't care how you do it, we don't care if they're safe, we don't care if you have six apartments in your basement, we don't care if there's cars all over the place, we don't care if you have a second entrance or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, you might call uh, that infringing on property rights, but I say it's, it's uh, important to balance. Uh, uh, like you said, balance. And so I think what the city is doing now is a responsible action uh, to not keep our head in the sand any longer, that uh, we, we know they're out there, but we're not going to do anything about it. We, we need to provide a method whereby they can be considered legal and committed. So if they do not comply, then we're going to do all we can to send the message out there to everybody that we're aware of that has apartments and try to get the message out that this is what you need to do, and they still will not conform, then uh, there will be some enforcement that will have to occur. And so uh, ultimately that could be a fine. It would, it would be something that uh, possibly could go to court. The judge would determine how to handle it at that point, but uh, there will be some enforcement. Some cities that we've looked at, what they've done is if, it, they, they, if you're in a zone that allows for an accessory apartment, but say you haven't gone and registered it and everything, some of these cities will say you have a certain amount of time to bring that into compliance, and, and then they expect it. If, if you don't, in some of these cities, they will oversee the removal of the kitchen from an accessory apartment that you have. So they come and take it out. So. Uh, well, yes. Uh, so anything that wants to be, uh, or any uh, property owner that would like to use their mother-in-law apartment, so the difference being it could be 
basically constructed the same way, but what we have the property owner do is sign a second kitchen affidavit, which basically needs to be uh, notarized, stating that this is not to be used as a rental unit. It is for family purposes, so that other family members, it could be your mother-in-law, it could be your, you know, uh, your kids or whatever, that they can use that as long as you are stating legally, notarized, that you are not using this for uh, a, an apartment to be rented to someone else. So you've got that permission. You don't have the permission to be able to rent it to somebody else. So yes, you would need to register your mother-in-law apartment to be an accessory apartment as well. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have. Do you have a question? You know what? One of the reasons that we follow the procedure that we do here is so that we can get a good record of this, so that in in the future, somebody wants to, to be able to go back and read what happened during this meeting. You'll find the last thing that we do here is we're gonna approve the minutes from the previous meeting. So we go through and we say, all of us have, have received those, um, they've been typed up, and, and we've reviewed them to make sure that they're right. The, the problem with a discussion like this is how do we know who said what? Because it's being recorded, but Linda doesn't always know who you are or what your name is, and that's why that's why we're doing it this way. So if, if we can, let's do it this way to begin with. Let's go ahead and we'll go through and we'll see if we can cover any of the other questions that, um, that, that have been posed or the concerns that have been brought up as best we can. And then let's open it back up just for a minute again, and we'll have you come in and address us from the podium and give us your name and your address again so we have that on record. So let's go down this real quick. Um, okay. I guess I have the questions coming. Yes, you do. I somehow became the uh, scribe. The scribe. Um, what is God, a secretary? <laughs> I've been called much worse. So, um, let's see. Okay, so I think one of the biggest ones was the actual enforcement. I think people, some people wanted to know. I understand Ken says the idea is to enforce it, but some people might have, might have wanted some specific. Do we actually have the means to enforce it? And what is the city going to do to do we need to hire more people? Is it feasible to do with staff as is? Are we going to create more? I still think it's going to only be complaint-based. That's that's the truth. We're not going to send the Gestapo out. If your neighbor complains about it, then it, about about a use, that what they're going to do is they're going to call up and they're going to say, "I've either got a noise disturbance that I got to complain about, or it might are they do they have a legal accessory apartment because somebody's living over there with them." And and that's the way we're going to do it because we're not going to send a policing power out to come do it. So, so since this is, is this discussion time as well? For us. For us, is. right? We yeah. close up the, okay, so let me play the devil's advocate here then, right? Um, so, <laughs> so, so, so we're, we're, we're going to rely on neighbors then. Um, is there a public registry or is it just a phone call saying, hey, can I find out whether my neighbor's in compliance or not? Because right now, as, as we've heard from testimony, this is already happening all over the place. So are we just going to get in it? Are you going to get in a day with a phone call saying, "Hey, I just don't like this neighbor. I want to know if they are or they aren't," or "Hey, I'm really concerned over traffic." You know. Um, well, I, I, I suppose we're just going to have to take it as it comes and see what the need might be. But we're, we're anticipating that with current staff, we are, are going to be able to handle uh, the level of complaints that may come in. Uh, that may or may not be correct, but um, we have received many phone calls over the years, not complaining, uh, neighbors complaining on each other, but just inquiries as to, well, are accessory apartments legal? Or I've, I've got one, can you do this? And we explain, no, you can't. And we said, oh, okay, well then, you know. You didn't hear from me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so unless there's been a, a strong concern, a complaint, the city hasn't done anything about that. Have there been a lot of complaints over the years? And there no. been a lot of phone calls from um, the way Orem City does it is Orem has all of the legal registered accessory apartments on a website just by address. And so you can look it up by 
I believe by zip code and by address. So you can look them up, you can look up and say, oh, what do you know? My next door neighbor has a legal accessory apartment and it's okay. And, and we may do that. It would be a matter of public record. Okay. Yeah, well, and that's part of it. Like, they have two years to register. Yeah, so we so have a little it, time to be, create the process. Yeah, we'll be building up that registry. Yeah. Next one. Sorry, I have one other oh, comment to add to that. Here? It's just um, also having these guidelines for the accessory apartments also it, it gives the rights to the neighbors, right? It holds people accountable. So if they're, you know, previously they they weren't allowed, right? So then they're not, you know, they're not compliant in that regard. But um, you know, if there's it gives specific kind of violations to hold people. Well, I think it protects, I mean, the, yeah. the way we designed this is, is that now if your neighbor has an accessory apartment and it's not being managed correctly, maybe it doesn't have enough parking or something, now you can say, um, hey city, my neighbor has an accessory apartment and it doesn't wreck his whole world, right? So now now they're not gonna come and shut him down and, and everything, they're gonna come and say, are you in compliance with the ordinance or not? And you can correct it that way without knowing that you could potentially put somebody out of their home, um, which I think is a much better way to, to deal with this. So, and it's ahead. less, sub, like, as far as parking goes, it's less subjective, right? Like, well, this neighbor feels like they have too many cars, and this person, no, I don't think we have too many cars. Well, this gives that that kind of guideline. It's two more spaces, say, yeah, period. Like, That's it. Yeah. If they're okay, you have to accept it or you have to fix it. So. Mm -hmm. And well, along those lines, we can address Mr. Scholl's question about, I think he I had a question about the driveway and what happened. Just, I guess we don't know the yeah, specifics so, yeah. of that, but does anybody have any input on, on the separate driveway and parking? What if, what if there's a house that does, it's not feasible to put a driveway in or, or something like that. I think what he was saying is that he was saying that nobody respected the existing and added parking that was added because they said it was illegal. Well, and what's happened in the past, unfortunately, is going to be the past. This is going forward from here. Um, and and I, I think, I mean, we, I, I'll tell you, we argued about parking a lot for probably hours. <laughs> And, and so we came up with what we came up with as a compromise where we went back and forth and we said one space and two spaces and no spaces. We don't need any additional spaces. And we finally, when we finally came down on, well, we all voted a couple of times and we came down on two just being the right thing for the best thing. So, okay. um, anything else? Sorry, I'm going to maybe I won't, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, I understand that I I do value people's property rights as well, and um, also the need. You know, I do understand that there there are people. You know, as you hit retirement or circumstances change in your life, that you you know having an accessory apartment and having that extra income, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I also feel that in Pleasant Grove, we have, speaking too personally maybe, but there's a, there's a lot of um, different housing options. There's apartments, there's condos, multifamily, single family. Um, there's a wide variety. And, you know, part of this ordinance is it's for the benefit of everybody that lives here and to not overcrowd neighborhoods. We don't, you know. We don't want to have an accessory apartment in every home in a neighborhood that just you know anyway so if you you know if there isn't room for the parking or if you if if the guidelines can't be met then it does then the, the home doesn't qualify to have an accessory not property. all of them no. not all of them yeah. Yeah. and so, and i don't think right. it has ever been intended to create a situation whereby every single home in Pleasant Grove would be able to have right. an accessory apartment. It's just that's not practical. Right. There are homes and on lots that just this simply will not work. Obviously, if you're out in the RR zone and you've got a full acre and you can build a separate little building in the back, if you could build a shed back there or a barn back there, you could probably build an apartment back there. So. Okay with that. 
Um, we had the question, I forget her name, just with the conflict with other organizations, which I keep. Yeah, there's that or. The, I, I, I think Commissioner Richards here. Yeah. Well, no, it was Commissioner Steele. The, yeah, yeah. Referencing the ordinance in the other. That's that's one. But what about conflicts with, with other ordinances? I guess. Well, I think that was something that Royce has done. It's gone through, and that's why to begin with, you read this is amending sections ten point six point two and ten point nine point a is because there are a lot of different places where we have to modify little snippets of of our code in different places to allow this use in multiple zones so if if we run into a conflict and every once in a while as a city as a planning commission um royce will run into something where there is something that's not clear or in a zone something happened where it's like wait a second how did that sneak in because we've copied it from someplace else or whatever and we we spend some time with code maintenance like that because it's not always completely congruent. So we, as soon as, whenever Roy sees that or, or Ken sees that, he brings it to us and we change the code to fix it. So that's okay. I think those were the main questions. Okay. Um, Can we look up the code? Um, why don't we open it back up for a minute? Because I think we've tried to answer everything and uh, have you step back up here, Stephen, and give us your name. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, remember not to repeat what's already been addressed. Just new comments. So I guess what got me up there is is that online? Is that something that we can look up and reference? Why don't we ask for this, this, our proposed code? Do we have it? But is that something that everybody in the room can go look at? Okay. So where, 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 where is it where people come yeah. in? Is it on the city website? Can you go by them? So, yeah, where is it? Did, did we get the this meeting uploaded? Yeah. So, yeah, it would be under under planning in the community development section of the city website. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Another comment. It, but just a second. Isn't the is all staff reports listed on the website and the staff report emails? Yes. So so, so if you go to the there. yeah, if you go to the website and you go under where all the minutes and everything else goes, there's a section called staff reports. If you click on that, it will give you staff reports for city council, for planning commission. I, I'm not sure about board of adjustments, but you know, the main committees we all get staff reports which is what we have right here and the ordinance and, and so you will know exactly what kind of information that we receive before we get a meeting so those are available online so if you can go there you can pull up all our staff reports and you know exactly and it just goes before the city commission assuming that it's city council assuming that it's approved tonight then public input cause change to, to being proposed there. Yeah. It, it could. Okay. It's, a, it's a different committee. Yeah, we, oh, we, do, we make our recommendations. The city council has the final say. Yeah, okay. okay. We've just been asked. I mean, they, they kind of tasked us. They said this is a zoning thing. So you guys. But public input that night could cause it to be it could. modified. Okay. Yeah. The comment you know, we are modifying single family residences. If there's a family in there with children, they're not going to have space to rent. This is, you know, when you get the single person buying a home, which is rare, or a retired couple, or once again divorced or widowed or something. But when it's your own home, you're going to be a little bit more picky about who is there and what is going on. It's not going to be a duplex situation that's why we and felt so, that that was one of those things that's really important that that rice actually made us a picture for. <laughs> <laughs> is is that it has to be owner occupied we don't want duplexes all over the place this is a different living situation if i mean the parties are going to be a little bit 
lower key <laughs> if the owner still lives in the house. So, my name again, Vaughn Mayo. Um, you know, I hope you keep in mind there's a lot of nice ideas out there that don't work. I'm going to maintain the thing. You're not going to be able to equitably enforce this kind of an ordinance. You know, you're going to have to ask some staff. I mean, number one, you're going to communicate who's going to monitor every house that sells every week and notify them of these ordinances when they have to comply. Uh, nobody is. That's that is that's what I'm saying. So is, it's not is, that it's going to be going complaint oriented. You're going to take and create a very negative atmosphere. Okay. Jennifer is my next door neighbor. All right. I like Jennifer. Hopefully she likes me. You know, but if she complained about me, how am I going to feel about her? Oh, I I I would feel really, you know. Okay. Yeah. You talk about so many different regulations that pertain to different things like this. Okay, you mentioned my nephew Randy. All right. He grew up in a single family house. He's number three of 11 kids, all right? Oh, how well, many I sold a house with you before. <laughs> you sold a house with me? Yes, you did. I can remember where it was. It was down in Orem, down off the edge of the hill there, over by UVU. The one on Center Street. <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd never bought it. <laughs> <laughs> For a rental. <laughs> you know, if you speak about that house in particular, okay, uh, and you can picture it. It's on a highway. Mm -hmm. All right, five bedroom house. <coughs> okay, close to UVU. What well, would be a natural thing to put in there? Because of being, a, I put in some students. Mm -hmm. Guess what? City with their good idea. They evicted my tenants mm -hmm. because they were not related. You know, the students. It was cheap rent for them. It was good for them. Everything was positive until one girl wanted to be in there the other girls didn't want her in there she complained okay it created a problem for a lot of people that's what i'm saying if this is complaint oriented it's going to create a lot of animosity it's not enforceable unless you have a lot of people it's just going to be an unenforceable you know nightmare. Vaughn, i i i i think we all understand and recognize that that, that is one of the issues um, Jennifer spoke to that extensively when we've been talking about this, actually. And, and I know that she had a lot of influence with taking a lot of this down. But it's like I mentioned before, is that as it stands, if you know that the nuclear option is the only option with your neighbor, so you know your neighbor has an accessory apartment and it's bugging you and it's bothering you and it's infringing on your quiet enjoyment of your property and you know if you say something you like them but boy it's bugging you you know that the only recourse right now is to quietly complain to the city and have the city come and take that use away from them which might mean that they move i i don't think there's a perfect solution to this but i think this is better than what we have now and that's what we're trying to trying to do is trying to make it as, as perfect as we can. We, we acknowledge that it is not going to address every problem in every situation every time. But we are not all in complete agreement on every bit of this code. We, we worked it out and we That's all have different hours. minds and different <laughs> ideas. And, and we came up with what we feel based on, on the experience that we do have. And it's pretty varying. I mean, you know, down, I, you know, we got realtors. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> no. no, well, we do have people that live out in high density, live in very close proximity to their neighbors, and have different ideas about parking than some of the rest of us. So that was about you. We, 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 we've tried to put, I mean, we've, We've been tasked with this from the city council. We put our best foot forward and we've taken it very seriously and spent a lot of time on it, trying to get it as close as we can to what we would be willing to live with within our own community, which is that we all live here. And, and, and I mean, you, you're making some good points, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if there's like a, 
a perfect yeah. situation. Yeah, and there's so many different personality types. Some people will go right to the person and want to address it and work it out, and other people don't want confrontation, and they'll call the police and it, or make anonymous complaints. So this just really and he just it, calls the police every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm kidding. Kidding. No, no, I'm just <laughs> one of those that I would have respect. absolutely no respect for. Her. What's that? Because you would be one of those if you do If she really did that, she doesn't. I would have no respect for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because you're not person enough. You don't have enough That's things not what's, to say. What's hey, I don't right understand now. because a lot of right. times people don't understand what's going on. Yeah. No, and no, but it, but they understand how it's affecting them. And so the idea is that yes, we're all supposed to be accountable for ourselves and be, you know, respectful to our neighbors. Yeah, we have our properties and we're, we should be able to do what we want, but you can't infringe when it when it affects other people. So this just these are guidelines that help protect the owners as well as neighbors. Yeah, well, like I said, I think it's going to be very divisive because if people can't communicate with their neighbors, what are you crazy? there's going to be a problem. Right, and that's, we think just, that's we also have to recognize that that's the true. current situation is divisive and that there's a problem too. Well, it's probably so, more divisive because of the anonymous complaints and stuff like that. So people working together. I, I mean, I, like the letter that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went down to check things out because I care about my properties. Yeah. But it was bothersome to me that somebody complained anonymously without having the information, the correct information, they complained to me, they complained to the city, you know, where the property yeah. was, and to the police department, and it was totally unfounded. Yeah. Okay. And there's no way of that going back to them and saying, I'm sorry that you were wrong. So they're going to sit there and stew thinking that they were right when they don't. Right. And so all it's going to create is bad feelings. Okay. How does my tenant feel about all of their neighbors now? Yeah. If, 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 let, let me just address this for just a second. Um, the reality of what you're saying is, you know, the issue at, that we're dealing with tonight is not whether somebody complains anonymously or to somebody's face or calls staff or calls the police. That's really not the issue we're dealing with. We're talking about how somebody notifies somebody. It sounds like you've got some uh, it's bad taste in your mouth from from this this last uh, episode, but. Really not dealing with that um, here in this meeting. That, to be that honest just with you, adds to the bad case. It's just, really, if you'll let me finish, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed, I'm opposed if, if you'll let me finish, I've, 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 I've let you speak, and so if you let me speak, I appreciate it. Um, I just am trying to get to my point here. What's already happening is people have accessory apartments right now. The city is already getting calls or anonymous letters or tips or whatever from people that have um, accessory apartments. It's already occurring. Okay, and so. Um, in, in criminal law, uh, ignorance is no defense to the law. You can never stand before a judge and say, Judge, I didn't know this law existed, even though I broke it. Okay? And so your argument about your, your tenants getting evicted and how upset you were because they had one extra girl or something like that, wouldn't it be better if they knew? I mean, there's a counter argument there, right? If they knew what the law was, if they knew what the regulations were, then they would know whether they were in compliance or not. It wouldn't be a surprise to you or to them. They would know there's you know we have we have flat, uh, we have it drawn out you're either compliant in compliance or you're not and so I guess my point with with the complaints I'm not trying to stir stir up the complaint you received it sounds like that wasn't very fair to you but I think the complaints are already occurring so I, I don't see how they're going to increase now that we actually have uniformity and and um, a lot of it now that that was my point you're, you're welcome to respond to it if you like or. Well, I'm just saying the whole idea that a lot of ideas are nice ideas, but unless you can uniformly enforce it, it's not a good idea. And like I said, this is not something that can be. And you talk about, you know, being informed. Yeah, if I'd known about that, I couldn't, have, you know, do that. Fine, because I don't want to fight yeah. students anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, that's what I'm saying earlier. With this kind of an ordinance, every time a property sells, are you going to send them out of things? And this is a requirement. You have to do all this well, you, you know, you've been in the business in Provo. It's a misdemeanor on the realtor's part if they don't disclose the zoning. So and I won't even buy a property in Provo because of that. I, I, I understand. I'm not saying that I agree with that either. I, it, I, I Maybe we should just agree that this is a better bad situation than what we have currently. <laughs> or agree to disagree. Would rather they not be allowed at all? That, That's it, where we're at. We're not. It's going to be imperfect. 
There's no question. But this is a better situation than what we've got now. That's why we've addressed it. We've spent a lot of time trying to address it. You can make arguments that maybe we shouldn't have any zoning or we shouldn't have any regulation as far as this goes at all. You can make those requirements. I don't think that, I, I mean, I, I think this is the best of what we can do. So we all, I think, I mean, while we don't all agree with each other about what is in there, we've come to a consensus and I think we've spent a lot of time looking at this as a group trying to come up with something that will work as well as possible for the city that we love. So. I don't think it's going to resolve yet. Okay. The only way we'll know is to try it out and see. Right. I don't know if I'm just supposed to follow him or not. <laughs> Stanley and 175 staff. I had a question on the compliance when somebody registers the home. Is there going to be an inspection that is required? Is somebody going to have to come to every apartment and inspect it? Can, we, we talked about this and, and we, we actually, uh, Commissioner Richards, and we, we could probably address that a little bit, what we've talked about. Well, what, what, the, way we, the way we want it, you know, we talked about this in great detail and some were thinking that we should enforce, you know, send an inspector out and, and, and charge a higher fee, you know, for that. And, uh, you know, we, we wanted to kind of keep the fee down um you know i propose nothing but you know 25 dollars, i think is processing the paperwork here uh but uh in essence here that's your you're kind of there's a there's a list of uh, almost I don't know, hasn't been really developed yet but like a checklist is what we envision you know as to what you know you, you have to be in compliance for yeah, okay. yeah and that type of thing and then you you know, you you fill out that form. You know, you send some pictures, and you know, the picture your locations where the units are, and then you file that with the city, and uh, you sign, you know, uh, something saying an affidavit saying that this is true and correct. And uh, so, if there is an issue, like a public safety issue or or a complaint, you know, a, a serious complaint, and the city had to check into that, they would go back to your application and look at all the things in here. Then that could be in question as to whether you answered that correctly, or if those, or or, or or if it was correct, you know, that type of thing. It could be, it could help you. It could be against you too. Depends on you know the accuracy of the statement that you made, and uh, so that's you know one may never know whether you made an accurate statement until there was an issue, and so that's that's how we that's yeah. how we did it. Again, we tried to balance it. You know. You Take a picture. I mean, they'll they'll have to come up with the specific criteria that we want. But take a picture of your newly marked address that says clearly marks that this is has you know whatever B unit whatever B and, and we were thinking smoke detectors and a picture of the egress or the entrance to the apartment so that we know that it you know that meets code so it's safe so to get the in and out. Fire apartment can find you. Get in and out and GF GFCIs by the by the water in the in the kitchen and just a you know a few safety things but you know we're we're not going to send the building inspector out to your house like they do in I mean if you're going to build a new structure in the backyard that you need a building permit for yeah of course they're going to do that but if uh, you know in in most cases we envision a process where you come self report you come take some pictures of these different things according to the checklist and submit them with the application we're trying to keep it simple for the city and yet still kind of cover some bases. So that answers my question. Thank, Thank you. you. So about 10 years ago when we bought our properties, I went through all of these processes with the city. I had power to a, an accessory apartment that wasn't hooked up and I paid the fees. I had the inspection done. I had the licensed contractor do it. And then when they came to turn the power on, they told me that I couldn't have it. I went through the whole process. I paid the city the fees, and then I was told that I couldn't have it. You know, and so yeah, I had a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. However, to hear that everybody else has had these apartments, and for ten years I followed the law that I was told. 
And so, yeah, it's kind of kind of giving me a little bit of a <laughs> yes, because yeah, I had a lot of ten years that I Well, you can go and you, you now got something you can go down and say, okay, I met this, I met this, I met this, I met so, this. So yes, yeah, so now I can do it legally, yeah. okay, but I haven't done it. Right. So everybody else did. So anyway, thank you. Anybody else? Any last going? Going? No. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. One, one more. One more. Okay. 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 Regarding, you stated that the whole reason this has come up is because the city council asked you to look into it. No, that's not on, the whole reason. But okay, they know on that, the that's, basis, that's where on our basis of existing is complaints, is that correct? I, I think I it's a combination of like yeah, requests. I'm, I'm just curious what the it's nature. Deep. I'm it's curious deep. about the nature of the of the complaints that were mentioned. Um, but the, the, you you missed said that a lot was... of discussion, and we've asked, that, "Is this a common thing? Are there a lot of complaints?" They've responded, "There's not that many complaints," but they've also responded that there's a whole bunch of people from the community that call and say, uh, "What do we have to do to get our accessory part legalized? And and are they okay? And are they not? We're it, this isn't complaint driven so far. This is need driven. There's a need." Here that needs to be addressed. That's why it's being addressed. Okay. It's been halfway addressed for a long time. It's been ignored. There's been nods and winks and and people that have gone through hoops to get one, get them put in correctly where they met all the building and zoning code, and 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 went to that expense and haven't been able to use them. And there have been other people that have had three apartments in their house that have never asked anybody about it. We just need to address it. Okay. I I was just curious about that yeah. because I, I too get concerned about bureaucracy. Yeah. And and whenever you know one new thing is created, it's a slippery slide to the next thing. And right. so I, I I do get concerned about having to do something when it may not be necessary. This is so. one of those things where we're just trying to balance the situation. It, I mean, right now, for example, as we mentioned, your neighbor has an accessory apartment. And they're bothering you because of parking and your teenage son gets mad enough that he calls the city instead of coming to you and you walk over and talk to the neighbor then the solution that the city has right now for that little problem is to come and remove the use from the homeowner that might not be what you even want well are there, might, there might be what, what are the nuisance ordinances the existing nuisance ordinances are there not things that address those type of things without but going if you're to in violation of if you have an accessory apartment it's illegal and so if they get a complaint they take it away that's it we're fixing that okay okay and, thanks um yeah. you know like mr moon said you years ago right i mean this has been going on it was this it's been about a year and a half that we've been actively looking at this but there have been um committees and groups that have been looking and studying and proposing things for years so there was a lot of information that we a lot of that had been collected over the years it's been an ongoing discussion with the city with between the citizens and city council and planning commission it's been an issue for a long time yep it, it really uh, that's that's perfectly of, fair like i said thousands i'm just of thousands. i'm just one that likes yeah. to Keep if you can government know, things is yeah, limited I get it. as possible. But I get thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you for um, your concern comments. Okay, I think we'll close that and um, bring it back up here. And do you guys have anything else from all this discussion that we think we ought to get on the record? Uh, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. Um, this process has been um, pretty conflictive for me. Um, and so we were we were asked to take on this assignment and um, I did my best to cooperate and do my part in this assignment and I probably had done a lot of the arguing <laughs> based on some of these decisions um, my whole opinion on this um, the situation is there are situations that exist right now that does not require these requirements 
any regulation. And so it comes down to a rental or basically somebody paying to use your space. Um, and I don't think, I don't think that they should be, you know, targeted or singled out just because they're trying to increase their um, income or to help cover their costs. And I've, and I've stated that multiple times. Um, and I am extremely for uh, property rights. And I think that like some people have already said, and I've said it multiple times, people should be able to do what they want to. And so with regulations, I think less is more. Um, and so this is the first time that I've actually got to represent myself and my personal opinion. And, and I get to vote my personal self and my personal opinion. And I, I am conflicted because right now accessory apartments as there exist is not allowed by law or by code. Um, that is extremely uh, frustrating for me. And the fact that this um, ordinance or this code, I'm not okay with. I don't agree with it. Even though I, I did my part to participate and to balance it and try to negotiate and try to get it to the most most friendly and the less regulated I could possibly get it to, I'm still not okay with this. So I will not be supporting this ordinance on the basis that I think that it should be allowed and it should be allowed like a mother you know, situation, my situation. I think that, you know, I don't even, I don't even think it should be registered. I just think it should just be allowed and let people do with their property and their income and their social and their financial situations that they feel fit, that they need to survive and to continue their lifestyle. So that's where I stand. So they pick her. Um, anybody else have anything to say? Well, well okay, I do have something to say. Um, no, I'm all for property rights too and for people being able to do what they want to do so long as they don't infringe on the rights of somebody else's rights to do what they want to do. So like that you can't escape that. Yeah. Like, so yeah, that's, that's my own. My dad always used to quote that one man's freedom man's or another man's nose begins. Now, I'm going to ask if anybody has a, um, a motion because we're going to see if we can forward this on to the city council. And Jennifer, I'm going to say I appreciate you being a part of the process. It might not be ultimately what you personally are for or want, but I appreciate your input and trying to get it. I mean, this is, you know, we all have different opinions and we all try to come up with something that we can all live with. If you can't live with what we actually came up with, I get that. Um, it's not what I want completely either, um, but it's enough for me to say this is better than what we've got. And I'm not sure we're going to have another shot at getting it any more perfect. Um, I think we can amend it over time. I think we'll run into more problems in the way government works is we deal with that and we say, you know what, this isn't working and we try to deal with it at that time. But I think this one protects property rights of the individuals and balances them with, with the, the quiet enjoyment part of property rights for the neighbors. So I, I think we've done the best we could. I'm proud of the job that we've done. All of us have done, including the input that you've given. So anybody can I, want to make can I say something yeah. before motion yeah. is made? Just to, I, mean, I don't want to drag this on any longer, but I want, there's something that I think I would like to recommend to city council that I don't think we really fully covered here. And if you guys disagree with me, I'd like to know, but we really don't have any, any due process established, right? Okay. So, so what happens if you do get fined? Is it just a ticket? Do you, is it actually, like you said, pro was it a class C misdemeanor? Is it an infraction? Do, what's the due process right to go say, no, actually it wasn't compliance. I, I think that's something that city council should consider. Unless, did I miss something? Is that in there already? I, I think that we should include that in our recommendation. I think we should. And I, I don't see, I think part of that is that we've done our part of the job. And I think the due process end of it is more staff okay. and city council. So, right. so right. 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 It says a lien in this paperwork. Possibly. It may be a lien, including the possibility. If you read the verbiage there, it's not an absolute. So, so I think uh, the recent discussion we had with the city attorney was that uh, she wasn't comfortable with that point anyway in completely defining the due process because there may be a lot of different options 
and a lot of different scenarios that you don't want to say it has to be this way or it has to be that. So, I mean, you can make that recommendation and city council may or may not go with something further, but uh, I understand your concerns, but I think there was a, a balancing concern of how to deal yeah, with Yeah, and, and I'm sure city council is already planning on doing that. I just, I didn't know if there was any other recommendation you guys could think of that, just, that, that we should throw in there for city council, even though we know they're probably going to. I, 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 you know, I don't, I mean, I think we should, should make that a part of the motion that that has not specifically been addressed and that may be something that staff and the city attorney and the city council can address. We're talking about property use here. The, the, we don't talk about that, that part of the regulation as much, but I, you know, I mean, I think if the, the city attorney will probably go and look at how it's dealt with in other cities and go ahead and see if they can provide some input that way to the city council and come up with something. That's my guess. Sounds like a bad idea to recommend that to the city council. Absolutely. I'm just making sure they think of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody like to make a motion? Is anybody prepared? Take a stab at it? Okay. I move the planning commission to recommend that the city council approve the request for Pleasant Grove City for a text amendment creating the city code section 10-15-47 and amending sections 10-6-2 definitions 10-9a-2 permitted conditional and accessory uses 10-9b-2 permitted conditional uh, conditional and accessory uses 10-9c-2 permitted conditional and accessory uses and 10-14-24-2-c permitted proposed amendment would would affect properties in a1 did I skip one? Yeah. Uh, permitted conditional. Oh, right after. Oh, okay, I skipped the line, sorry. Uh, permitted conditional accessory uses, permitting accessory apartments in the Pleasant Grove City Code. The proposed amendment would affect properties in the A1, RR, R1, and RM7 downtown village and the Grove mixed housing subdistrict and allows for accessory dwellings and single family homes in the Pleasant Grove City Code. And would include the recommendation that uh, that the staff and city council um, look at the um, uh, due process process due process procedures procedures. Okay, we've got a motion from Commissioner Richards. Do we have a second? A second. A second from Commissioner Adams. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Or nay. Nay. Okay. Uh, so that passes with one, um, what, negative vote. Um, okay, now we've got one more thing. Thank you all for and coming. And again, this here. item is not uh, completely approved here tonight. It's going forward to the City Council on Tuesday. The meeting starts at 6 in this room. And, and the public is welcome to and they would love that as well. They're, they're actually planning, just like we're planning, if it gets big enough, if there's enough people that want to, to give input that evening, they're planning on, on moving it over to the rec center. Yeah, as so we were rec. prepared tonight. So it depends on the size of the crowd. It depends on how many people show up. So thank you for being here. We've got like one or two more little quick uh, what, um, housekeeping issues that we got to deal with. And uh, then we'll close, but you're welcome to step out if you want to at this point. Um, we'll, we'll go to here. item number nine, reviewing approval of the minutes from October 8, 2015 uh, and October 22nd, 2015 planning commission meetings. Um, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the planning commission minutes for October 8th. Okay, we've got a motion. Um, are, are you guys running into something? <laughs> oh, oh, well, we got to, we can't do it. We may have an issue. Yeah, I, I so on page uh, four, okay. item five. Four on eight. 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 Four, eight. item five. Yeah, October oh, eight. Oh, yeah, October eight. Sorry. Eight. 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 October 5th, mm -hmm. it says, it's line item 26, it says discussion on current city requirements for street improvements to be installed in connection with certain project sites. 
and then it goes through all of the discussion and then on page five um land 41 the motion is for commissioner baptista move to approve the planning commission meeting minutes and report of actions on september 10th so i don't know where our decision on item five went there was no decision on item five it was just an item of discussion we didn't have to make a motion or anything yeah, like we were no. just talking it about said it was a session yeah okay perfect that's all i need to okay know. okay then so we've got a motion from um, Commissioner Baptista. Do we have a second? I'll second. And a second from Commissioner Richards. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the notice of the Planning Commission minutes for October 20th.